Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Amateur Hour Sports. We're back at it with some basketball content once again as the Toronto Raptors are taking on the Portland Trailblazers. Yes, out on the West Coast and out for a late game here, 9.30 p.m. Eastern time, and we are just getting started here. So uh, let's, get her, let's get her going here today. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in, joining me on the stream for today. Let's see how this game shakes out for this Toronto Raptors team. Uh, trying to come back from two straight uh, from a, from two straight losses. Honestly, uh, a, a pretty good game, even though it's a loss against the Phoenix Suns. The Raptors showed out; they played pretty well. Hoping for more of the same for the Raptors in this one. And uh, if they play anything like they did in the Phoenix Suns game, they are going to win this game, and they are going to do so comfortably as well. Kind of a sad sight to see that the Raptors are at the point where they're only three and a half point favorites against the Portland Trailblazers, but that's just where the season has gone. Uh, would like to avenge early season. One of, one of the early, the early season sort of, uh, I wouldn't necessarily call it foreshadowing, but uh, early indication of where this season was heading was that loss early on to the Portland Trailblazers at home. If uh, anybody. Uh, can remember that one. So, you know, here we are. Uh, this is a situation, but this team is still out here trying to win games. This team is still out here trying to make the playoffs, and um, they should win this one. Uh, if you're a team that does actually want to make the playoffs, you should be beating this team today who does not want to make the playoffs. I think that's pretty fair. If you want to be a playoff team, you got to beat a team like this. So, We'll see how it goes down. Anyways, uh, regardless of that, as I said, it's only a um, it's only a three point spread, which I thought was a little bit low. Was kind of predicting before I I always try to predict what I think the spread will be uh, before I actually go and look. I was thinking today would be about five, and saw it. It was three. Uh, in fact, at our sportsbook partner Bet Nine Nine, it's at two and a half. So. Um, that was enough for me to think that's off, and I decided to go with, yes, uh, the Raptors to win this game by those three points. Again, our sportsbook partner, Bet99, has it at two and a half. Um, not a, not like, yeah, okay, I get it. Um, it's the sportsbook partner and whatnot. I've got the affiliate link. Um, I, I'm betting this anyways. I was betting this anyways. If you guys want to tail just for some fun, feel free to do so. But for me, yeah, I'm I'm happy to take the Raptors here to win by three or more points. And I did. So if you feel like tailing, you can do it at the Sportsbook Partner Bet99. Uh, as I put the link in chat there, I pinned it at the top of chat or the link is in the description as well. But I have money on the Raptors spread today. I, I think they're better than that. Uh, DeAndre Aiden was supposed to not play uh, he's actually confirmed in the starting lineup so I, I just guess he was elevated to active here Anthony Simons as well there were question marks about him but he is gonna be playing as well and uh, also uh, Portland on the second night of a back-to-back -back. I, I yeah e even not even considering the second night of a back-to-back -back stuff I, I probably it, it's Saturday right they played yesterday didn't they Oh, Google schedules aren't working here. Um, I, 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 yeah, they, they, unless I'm losing my mind, uh, Portland played last night. Yeah, they played last night. I know they're at home for both games, but back to back nights. Yeah, I, I, I don't understand the spread here. I, I think, unless I think the Raps are better than they are, which is possible, this spread doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me on that one. Uh, but we're, we're back. I was live yesterday. There was no Raptors game, but I was live yesterday. We had the, the almighty cooking stream. You guys have been wanting one. I finally did it. We had a cooking stream. We did the cheats stream. Had some fun doing that. I appreciate everybody who did show out and uh, show some support for that one. Uh, obviously, different content that's not going to appeal to the majority of the audience, but it was still fun to do, and there were still people who, uh, who, who enjoyed it. So I appreciate that. The cheats did make me full. Um, in the end... Um, they were pretty good. Um, you know, subbing with uh, cornflakes 
you know, it's still crunchy. It's still good. It's not as good as the real thing, of course, but you know, it was pretty tasty. Um, I was, uh, I was, I was satisfied with it. The combo actually works better than I thought. Like the fusion of the ingredients works, but it's not something that's worth the effort. Um, you know, do it once for fun, I guess, but it's not really worth repeating. Just make regular pizza or regular fried chicken and it'll be better than what that was, but it was better than I thought it would be. Um, but let's look at the chat here. Some conversations about Delano Banton. I'm glad Aramis Currybro brought this up here. Banton did have 30 points last game. Uh, he took 27 shots. Um, new subscriber here, Dustin J217. Thank you so much for subscribing. Welcome to the Amateur Hour Army. I really appreciate that. Um, subscribe yourself to Raptors to Watch Project like this and for videos. Uh, so Banton in Toronto, I, I continue to say uh, in um, whenever I we get we discuss Banton and why it didn't work out in Toronto, why they let him go. Uh, the season he played with the 905, I had season tickets. Uh, so I watched a ton of Delano Banton, and, and he is, like, way too good for the G League. But he's not good enough for the NBA. He's in this weird spot where uh, he just has a distinct lack of ability to create advantages for himself or teammates. So his dribble penetration at the NBA level is very poor. At G League, it's amazing. Like, you'll just pick up his dribble anywhere and find a way to get to the rim. Uh, he's got talent for sure. In the NBA, bigger, more athletic, and more talented defenders – like, that stuff just doesn't fly. Um, his ability to create advantages for himself off the dribble are very minimal. He just basically uses his size, athleticism, and length to his advantage against lesser defenders in the G League, and it works. Um, and, and, he's, and he's good. At, you know, he's, he's crafty. He's, he's not crafty, but he's talented at, at finishing at the rim as well. But when it comes to those better defenders, it's not really the case. It doesn't really happen. And he's just not as a good enough passer. Um, it doesn't create advantages in that way, and he, he doesn't shoot the ball well. Um, you know, he, he's a, he's an interesting player, but he's just not quite NBA caliber, unfortunately. But uh, I think he's the type of player that's good enough to have a career elsewhere. Um, for sure, he's good enough to have a career elsewhere. I wonder if this uh, good end of season gives him... Uh, Canada Olympic considerations. I don't know. Raptors let him go. The Celtics traded him for literally nothing. And now he just gets whatever with Portland. Like, he just takes whatever shot. I don't know. I, I don't think so. But, look, a local guy, Canadian, uh, would love to see him find success. I, I just, it's just not, I don't really see it. Uh, no Brogdon, not if I got here saying no Brogdon, Grant Sharp, or Robert Williams, obviously. Uh, Aiton's game time decision, no Jabari Walker. Um, DeAndre Aiton is playing, by the way. But uh, yes, the Raptors obviously uh, should win this game, as we said. Uh, we better win. Agreed. Let's say what's up to everybody in chat. Winner one, 905 Yada. Uh, two of the members out here supporting so far tonight. Aremis Curry Bro here. Kolb also joining, mentioning that the Nets look terrible. Sheridan Forbes once again, Remez Curry Bro once again, and Daniel Berry Sports highlights once again. Thank you so much, everybody. Banto was traded to Trailblazers for a protected second round pick. I've never heard somebody trade for protected second round, protected second round pick. I believe there were extraordinary protections on that second round pick as well. It, it was basically just like traded for nothing. Um, they just didn't want him anymore and they wanted the roster spot. If he had a consistent mid-range of floater, I'd be much higher at him because his passing and pick and roll is pretty overlooked. <sighs> People would catch on to that, though. He's got to have a bit more. He's got to have spacing. He doesn't even have that either. That's the thing here. Um, did the Leafs score? I would have got an update. Did they score? Oh, they did score. There you go. Oh, no, Montreal. That was a while ago. Unless they just scored, which is... Oh, they just scored. Oh, that's it. Um... Leave score. <laughs> Thank you, Nameless. All right, uh, it's Saturday night. I am ready to have some beer here. I am. Uh, I'm going. We're going fresh today, guys. Um, was walking by something in the water brewery out in Liberty Village today. I was just uh, near exhibition, and uh, I know something in the water brewery is in that area. I decided to go over and grab myself a six pack, and we're going to be something funky today, guys. 
we're going to be trying the Something in the Water Brewing Company. It is called the Bumper Boat PB&J Milkshake Beer. Something in the Water Company. Uh, can you see it over here? There we go. Oh, it's focusing on something in the back. Let's get it real close. The it's not focusing. Eh, I'm trying. Anyways, it says bumper boat, PB and J milkshake beer. Uh, funky little can here. Really does give PB and J vibes. You know the peanut butter color, the jelly color. Uh, I've had this on tap before there, so it's not a a new one here. As my camera's got a little yellow here. That's better. <laughs> uh, as it just adjusts. Um, yeah. Oh, let's read this. Uh, let's pour it first. Look at this color, guys. Look at that color. Very dark. Not my typical choice of beer. That's not a good pour. Not enough head on that. It's decent. Not enough, though. Um, we got uh, time to say goodbye to summer. Farewell to long days and tan lines. So long, deep fried butter corny carny folk and bumper boats what the fuck this here is a beer for the end of summer adventure seekers thirsting for one last hurrah and oh what a beer a white stout beer milkshake a curious combination of flavors sure to make the inventor of the cronut burger blush what are these words here it won't give you next summer's beach bod but it will warm your cockles whatever those are that's what it says. It actually says whatever those are for autumn. I That made no sense. Um, okay, well, that didn't make any sense. Anyways, cheers. No head on this anymore. Very bad pour. But cheers. It's a little bit full. I don't want to go up to the camera. Let's have a fun Saturday night slash Sunday morning. Guys, there ain't, there ain't nothing that you've had that tastes like this. I don't know how they do it. That is tasty. I mean, that is tasty. It, it's got that, you know, peanut butter aftertaste. You know what I mean? Like, it's like that sticky peanut butter aftertaste, but it's not sticky. And it's got that bright, fruity punch of flavor. Mmm. Like, fruity punch of flavor in beer is very tasty. And it's just got that peanut butter undertone and aftertaste along with it. I don't know how they get that flavor in a beer, but they do. And it is tasty. Mm. It's nothing like you've ever tried before, I would, uh, I would wager. But, man, 5.4%. That is tasty. What's in this? Water, malted barley, oats, lactose, oats, strawberry. There's actually strawberry in here. Wheat, yeast, and they actually use peanut butter flavor. <laughs> so it says peanut butter flavor and hops. But you wouldn't think it would work, but it just does. Man. And uh, what's cool about something Water Brewery, if you buy a six-pack, you get a free, a free pint on site if you want it. I was there and it was chaotic, so I didn't want one, but um, in future, yeah. Uh, I've been there before, like I said, but that is really, really good. In the, the Bellwoods Brewery glass today, you see the, the bell there. That is uh, in Toronto as well. That is a tasty beverage. All right. Wrap this game tonight here. I think they're gonna win. I just, I, I think they're gonna cover that spread. I, it just seems too low. It just seems too low. I, we're, we're talking like Portland are missing a litany of players too. I know we're down bad, but are we this bad? I don't. Uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. We've lost three games in a row. This would be pretty massive for the tank battle, though, wouldn't it? 
I uh, just just taking a look here. So we're seventh worst. Uh, by the way, I, a lot of people have I've seen a lot of people say, like, what's the point of tanking? It's not like you're gonna catch the Memphis Grizzlies in the losing column. Uh, and I'm like, like, yeah, you, yeah, you are. Um, <laughs> you're a game and a half up on them. You know, I've seen like the, you really think the Raps are out tanking, you know, like GG Jackson, Jake LaRavia, who, who, who else, whoever else playing for that team right now. Uh, yeah, we might, you know, this is how far we've fallen. This is how bad we are. We're a game and a half up on that Memphis Grizzlies team. They are like Memphis is atrocious. We are only a game and a half up on these guys. You want to know how bad the Raptors are? I guess they're that bad, but five and a half games up on the Portland Trailblazers. Yeah. Yeah. Um they really suck. And doesn't look like the Raptors are going to be able to catch them. But you can catch Memphis. You definitely can catch Memphis. Like, Grizzlies are definitely worse than us, but clearly not that much worse. And uh, gives the Raptors um, a 31.9% chance of keeping their pick. Uh, because actually, as the seventh, uh, the seventh seed in, in the Tankathon... It is impossible for the Raptors to end up as the five or six pick in the draft. As the bottom, as the seventh lowest team, they are either top four or they're anywhere from seven to 14. Kind of weird, but it is the same position, number seven, that the Raptors were when they drafted Scotty Barnes. They had the seventh lowest odds, or seventh best odds, rather to get the top overall pick. So when the Raptors were not selecting seventh overall, that immediately told Raptors fans that they were in the top four, which was very, very exciting. I remember that watch along. I remember the draft lottery watch along. Good times, man. You, you got to celebrate where you can as a Toronto fan these days. But you can go bottom six here and give yourself a... 45% chance of keeping your pick. Anyways, it's structured in such a way so that every team in the lottery has a certain percentage of getting into the top four. And, and of course, every team also has the possibility of getting the number one overall pick, which um, isn't as valuable as it was last year, but uh, it does still have some value. Interestingly, the bottom three teams have the same chance at a top four and a top overall pick. Um, you're just... Adam Silver tried to decentivize tanking, and certainly uh, he's done that, Does it? but it won't stop some teams. Uh, ben Simmons to Raptors, Kishore says, yeah, maybe like under Nick Nurse, a vet minimum, take a flyer. I'm not sure if that's the type of guy that Darko would really succeed in working with. Um, although he doesn't really... Never mind. Uh, yeah, I don't know. If there's like a roster spot available and you can get him on a minimum, sure. Like take a chance on him. I, I was actually having a conversation with one of my friends the other day. Um... Yesterday, not the other day, I had a conversation with a friend yesterday, and we were at we were debating whether this would be Ben Simmons' final NBA contract. So that could be a talent problem. That could be a oh fuck me, sorry, god damn it. I ah uh, okay, new underdog NBA update. R.J. Barrett is a very late scratch for this game. Ah, oh, jeez. I'm going to try. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I got I to gotta play back. Ah, oh, I can't because it'll... Ah, oh, it's a bad position on the bet, unfortunately. 
Can I play back real quick? Nah. Ah, oh, yeah, no RJ Barrett tonight. A late scratch due to illness. Ah. Oh. He was announced in the starting five like a few minutes ago. Uh, wasn't he? I swear I saw him announced in the starting five. Yeah, he. so R.J. Barrett was originally announced in the starting five. And then he was taken out. So is that a tank move? Probably a tank move, eh? Ah, jeez. Well, I I hope I I hope you didn't tail my bet. Um, apologies if you did, but like, geez, you, you'd think within thirty minutes of the game starting, the lineups were pretty much locked in. Ah, uh, well, this game is going to be a whole lot less fun without R.J. Barrett. Um, who the fuck is starting? Uh, Grady Dick's starting. That's cool. Okay. So quickly, Trent, Dick, Abaji, Olenek. And then off the bench, uh, certainly Boucher will be off the bench today. <laughs> um, other than that, uh, our entire normal bench is not on the bench today. Uh, other than that, Christ. <laughs> Jordan Noir played like shit in three minutes uh, two days ago and didn't get back in the game, but I guess... He's got to play today. Oh, Freeman Liberty was good last game. He'll get more game time today. Uh, so I suppose that's three. And other than that, I mean, ah, geez, I don't know where they're going to go here. DJ Carden, Jemais Ramsey. Uh, regardless, yeah, that's um, that's kind of shitty. What do you guys make of that? So I know Nameless is uh feel strong that this is a very much a tank move. Do you guys think this is a tank move or do you think this is an actual genuine illness because that is a very strange way to announce it. However, is it done in this strange way to prevent looking like it's tanking? That's potentially what's going on, but I am uh, I'm not sure, not completely convinced it's a tank move. I would lean on that side that it is a tank move, but I'm not completely convinced. Well, you bet against the Raptors against the Suns, then you um, you lost, actually. So Hopefully they come through to get today and uh, win the bet regardless. But that is a bad bet I have. What everybody get up to today? Saturday, ugly weather in Toronto. But uh, what'd you all get up to? Me, since you asked, went to the went to the gym this morning. Got a good workout in. Been losing weight. Been feeling good. Uh, saw my grandma today. Had some lunch with her, board games. It was fun. And then since then, I've been since I've been pretty much just playing darts, to be honest. I played a lot of darts today. I played like ass today, too. I did uh, not play well today, but uh, I played okay. I'm a bit harsh on myself. Let me see how I played. Did I, did I play that bad? Um... Uh, 
This game I played. Yeah, that was a bad game early today. Then this afternoon. Ah, uh, that's a pretty good game. That's a bad game. I had one good game, one bad game. Anyways, what did y'all get up to? Next stop, October. What do you mean? Spend as much time as possible when you visit Nana. She came over to, uh, to visit me, actually. She hadn't seen... Uh, not my Nana. It's not my Italian side. But she um, she hadn't seen my apartment since I moved in, surprisingly. So uh, she came over today to do that. And uh, I was supposed to come go see the area. But uh, it's so gross outside in Toronto that we just stayed in. Still had a good time, though. That was good. Um Bobby Clintman. Who's Bobby Clintman? I don't know a lot about him. I kind of seen the name, but um, he played for the team with the coolest jerseys in sports, in, in basketball potentially, the Cairns Taipans in the uh, NBL. If you guys haven't seen the Cairns Taipans jerseys, where do you where do you get a look at these? Man, these are fire! Like. All of them. Maybe not that one. But like the orange with the snake skin. The blue. Like that is beautiful jersey. Beautiful jerseys. Damn, dude. They, they, these ones are okay. They really just absolutely smash with these jerseys. I mean, oh, let, what, let's see what, jer let me see what jerseys you got here. Let me pull up the jerseys here. Like these are they got some fire fucking jerseys, man. What is this? A Shazam version of the jerseys? All right. The, these aren't really for me. But I mean kind of cool for like a basketball jersey. It, it, it's still kind of cool to be honest. They they really step up with these jerseys. Are there any like non Shazam ones? I don't really, you know what? I don't really care for these black ones. But yeah, like the orange. Oh man, these ones. They're on sale right now too. Oh my god, they have bangers for jerseys. They have the dark blue one. I might go crazy. Champion. Were they the champs last year? Oh, that's the brand champion jerseys. Oh my god, this one. Like this dark colored one. This one is is really, really nice. The away jersey. I, I don't care for the blue one this year actually too much. I don't super care for that one. But the orange. Sign up, get 10% off. Listen, I might just sign up. And uh think about this tomorrow. Who do I support? Karen's Typins, baby. Uh, phone number. Make sure it's not on screen here. Call me up about the offers, cause like I might have to. I might have to. Like these ones too aren't. These ones aren't bad. But the uh, certainly these orange ones. These are fire. Nothing better than the, the away ones, though. Yeah, the away ones. That's, uh, those are nice. Was it, but the Shazam, these are kind of cool, too, though. I don't know. Oh, the orange. The, uh, these are the best. The, the, the snakeskin version with the, with this color on sale, too. And you can get a guy you expect to be... Oh, jeez, they don't have extra large. Oh, they don't have a player on this one. I guess that's better, though, because, like, you don't even know the players. Anyways. <laughs> what do you all think about these jerseys, huh? You have to be in good shape to wear sports jerseys. Uh, basketball jerseys kind of fit anybody, usually. Soccer jerseys, I think so. But basketball jerseys kind of just fit everybody. 
Do they have one for the dog? I, I, I guess you could get a <laughs> super small one for the dog. But uh, uh, I, I don't know. They, they do, these, these do be getting a little, bit, a little bit pricey. So maybe not for the dog. But damn, they, uh, they got some fire fucking jerseys, I tell you. And the fact that they're like pretty largely on sale makes me want to pull the trigger here. Am I in ca Canadian dollars as well right now? If I'm on Canadian dollars as well, then like. Absolutely have my interest. We're not in that wasn't in Canadian dollars. It was like 50 bucks here. Are we saying that's not Canadian dollars. If it's 50 Canadian, I know shipping is going to be like just egregious, but. For 50 bucks, to get clearly one of the best jerseys in sports is, uh, is, is interesting here. Let's just add it to cart. Oh, they don't have my size, right? They don't have, they don't have my size. Let's see. What do they got? What do they got in XL? I don't want the freaking Shazam jersey. Oh, they don't have it. They don't have my sized for the one that's on sale. That's unfortunate. That's very sad. Ah, uh, that's the only one I wanted. The white snakeskin, man. That's the only one. The orange snakeskin's kind of cool, too. They have XL. They got that one. Let's just see what it looks like in the cart. It says 64. It says 64 Canadian. It is in Canadian dollars. That's pretty good. Let me just check the shipping. Shipping estimates for Canada, Ontario. Uh... Enter postal code. Make sure you guys can't see it. <laughs> Shipping eighteen ninety five. Tell you that's pretty good, guys. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna have a conversation with myself about this later on. Yeah, it's sixty four Canadian, eighteen twenty like eighteen almost nineteen dollars shipping. And um, basically, you're paying eighty bucks for the jersey. To me, that's uh, that's a pretty good deal. But all this from a guy mentioning a uh, uh, a um, somebody in chat mentioning a player on their team that's uh, looking to go high in the NBA draft. <laughs> mm. They do have X on the snakeskin one. Oh, because it's got the, it's my address in here. Because it's got the uh, the Pride Champion logo, which I don't care about. That's fine. Okay. You know, maybe a, a few beers later, <laughs> I'm going to have a Cairns Type Ends jersey on the way. <laughs> on the way from Australia. <laughs> All right. That will uh, that'll do that'll do it for this. I'll uh, let, let's get back to biz here with the Raptors. But tell ya, tell ya, might might just might just have to here. Uh, RJ having tank surgery on his right knee. He's out with an illness. He'll be back for the next game. He'll be back for the next game. Uh, do you guys feel as though? Uh, This is a this is just absolutely a tank move. I'm not like a hundred percent convinced, but uh, let's put a poll in chat. Uh, is only for the tank? Is RJ is RJ out? Oh, oh shit! Is RJ out only for the tank? Yes, no. Uh, you guys, let me know. I'm not a hundred percent convinced. 
I did not watch the uh, Nganu Joshua fight. I was doing the stream and getting ready for the stream yesterday. However, I did see the highlights. Um, good grief. Yeah, that was uh, pretty impressive by Joshua. Uh, has bounced back pretty well since I, I think he lost back to back to uh, Ushik. Uh, he's bounced back pretty well from that. And, um, is, you know, uh, he hasn't beaten guys that are super, super notable here. Would love to see him get the Tyson Fury fight one day. Not sure if that will ever go down. But, uh, you know, AJ is starting to, to get himself back into this sort of notable phase. At the very least, uh, it feels like to me. So we'll see if he can continue and uh, if he can if he can keep going with it. But Vich, I mean, Nganu probably beat. Like, let's be like let's be honest. Nganu probably beat. Uh, Tyson Fury. Uh, the scoring was very suspect in the end. Like, let's be honest here, guys. Scoring was was pretty suspect in the end. It kind of felt like Nganu had won that one. Not sure. Um, but I, I know he got pieced up by Anthony Joshua. But I, I like how AJ still gave him his props and said, like, keep on boxing. Like, you'll beat players. I thought that was pretty cool. So we shall, uh, we shall see what's next for Nganu in boxing. This game's got to be on very soon here, huh? So... The poll would suggest that, yes, RJ is out for the tank here. Yeah. NBA must be losing money this year. Juries are never that cheap. It, it was on sale. It was on sale in, in Australia. I don't know. It's pretty good price. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. I uh, haven't done the door shot yet. Thoughts on Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson. I, Mike Tyson's got to win that, right? Right? Man, if Jake Paul beats Mike Tyson. That's crazy. I know he's 57, but still. All right, let's do the door shot. Don't want to be too rushed here. We got some time pregame. Let's get this door shot in. So, missed the last one. Doors open today, which means I got a funky angle again. I usually miss on the funky angles. 15 of 26. Don't want to slip too far here. Let's make this one. Not going to aim for the backboard. Not calling bank. Ooh. Oh, baby. That is on the money. Jeez. Dude. So, missed a... That was, uh, let's pull up the instant replay. That was on point today. Absolutely on point today. Let's get that instant replay. That was straight cash, no rim, nothing but the net. And I knew right away. I knew right away. Came out clean. And I knew. I knew I'd just done something special right there. Let's go, boys. We got the door shot to drop. Raptors about to get started here. We're feeling very good now. Beers are flowing as well. Very awful bank shot. Call it time. That was so much better. Yeah, I mean, I, it was clean. Absolutely clean right as the Raptors game begins here. So we move to 16 of... 27. Let's get going. There 
And to start off the game, Manuel quickly takes it to the rack and finishes. Yes. Well, let's play that. Yes, Great start for the Raptors here. Two to nothing out the gates. Again, Raptors taking on the Portland Trailblazers tonight. Remind everybody, hit that like button if you're ready to go for the game here. And subscribe if you haven't done so already for Raptors content. Let's go. Here's, I think it's Chris Murray, brother of Keegan. You could probably tell by how alike they are, but uh, this this Blazers team is shit. The Raptors should still win by three, uh, quite honestly. Here we go. To the rim, Oche Abaji. That is an ugly layup attempt. Ugly, ugly layup attempt. My PB&J beer almost done. First commercial, I'll uh, go for another. Uh, by the way, to the members, typically Sundays are member-exclusive live streams. Tomorrow, I have brunch with my sister, uh, so I won't be able to make that one. Again, I apologize. I really wanted to do last week because I knew I was missing this week. However, my knee gave me a lot of issues last week. I apologize. I, I try not to miss when, when I can, but uh, unfortunately, tomorrow, from family matters, as I said, so no stream tomorrow morning. Hopefully, you understand. Yeah, these, this PB&J beer is good. Again, this is something in the water. Bumper Boat PB&J Milkshake Beer. Highly recommend something in the water brewery. Liberty Village, Toronto. Gary Trent Jr. for three. Way off the mark. And the Portland Trailblazers lead through Delano Banton at uh, the free throw line. Here's Chris Murray. Has his pass stolen by Olenek. Here's Gary Trent. Gary Trent transition layup. Did, did what? Did you, did you think? Did you think Gary Trent at any point was going to score there, guys? As the Blazers to the three. But you watched that play. I knew when Gary Trent cost, crossed half court, if he didn't pass, he wasn't fucking scoring. Like, there was just no way he was ever going to hit that layup. Why did he shoot that? Does he know, like, does he know who he is or what? Gary Trent in transition. Like, honestly, Gary, just just shoot the three, pal. Don't even bother getting to the rim. It's not going to go in. Oh, Linick, Nice little rejection on DeAndre. And here's Oche Abaji to the rim. Layup. No good. Trent, couple attempts. Tipped away out of bounds. And ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be a long night. We are, we are, we are. Two minutes and 21 seconds into this game. This is going to be a long night. This is this is rough. This is a rough watch so far. Here's Gary Trent for three. No good. Rebound to uh, DeAndre Ayton. Ayton lays it up and lays it in. And good time out by Darko. And I, if I'm going to watch this game... I tell you, I need another drink. Um, I'll be back in like 10 seconds. Rough start for our Raptors here, uh, but hey, we're going to get through it. This is one I haven't tried by Something in the Water Brewing. It's going to be a Something in the Water Brewing night. We have the Something in the Water Pineapple Express Terpene IPA. 6.5%. Uh, oh, man, they wrote a story here. Okay. Um, let's read it. We're embracing the future of cannabis. What? This got weed in it? We're embracing the future of cannabis and beer, as well as a fun French friendship with fine folks at Hops Connect Canada for this dank and delicious terpene IPA. 
named Pineapple Express after the atmospheric river that flows from Hawaii to western Canadian shores, transporting tropical moisture and groovy laid-back vibes all the way. Aloha indeed. This beer showcases Abstracts Brew Grass Series Botanically Derived Cannabis Profile Terpenes. Don't worry, it's a mouthful, but all flavor, no THC or CBD. Tough. That would have been fun. Uh, <laughs> when combined with Strata, Brew One, and Idaho 7 Hops, it brings that dank pineapple aroma and flavor IPA drinkers love so much. So it sounds, it sounds good. So it's supposed to taste like weed and, I guess, tropical fruit, but not have jabated, <laughs> but not have the uh, THC or CBD. That would have been, honestly, when I looked at, when I saw cannabis on it, I, I got kind of excited, but uh, not to be. All right, here's our pour. Now, that's, that's a pour right there, right there. Splitting the logo a little bit. Logo's a bit low on this one. That is how you pour a beer. Get that nice hop there. Uh, would have had to, no, because in my mind, reading it, I'm like, there has to have there. There needs to be a listing on the amount of um, milligrams of THC or CBD on it, or something like that. They need to have the the milligram amount on the outside. There's no way the brewery has a license to sell marijuana. Um, so I, I was skeptical reading it. Like, okay, it's clearly something like just about this. Anyways, um, I don't know. Adding taste and no THC is bizarre. Wrapped is down 11-2. Christ, Abaji 3. <sighs> this is going to be a long night, folks. Okay, so, bam, you smell like, definitely you smell that, that cannabis sort of smell. Oh, jeez. <laughs> I got too close. I got... Foam on my nose. 13 to Portland. Darko don't have enough time out for this. You you smell that. Let me let's try. Tasting it. I've kind of got this like a dry sort of finish. The color is what I would usually want for a beer. Mm. Olenic finish there, 13-4. You know, when I read Pineapple Express, I really want, like, bright tropical flavors. Not really getting that here. It, it, it's a dry sort of sort of taste, if that makes sense. Yeah, you really smell the, the cannabis. You don't taste it, though. That's strange. If you had just given this to me, I would have no idea it was cannabis infused. Since I know kind of the, the aftertaste kind of gives me the cannabis feeling, the, the taste rather, but I wouldn't know it if I didn't read that. It's okay. It's uh, PB and J beer is like eight and a half out of ten. This is um, this is probably a six. It, it it's your standard, just standard IPA. You know, if you got it at a bar, you're like, ah, it's okay. I'll I'll drink it. All right, we'll get that down. All right, locked in now. Down seventeen to four. Um, yeah, I, uh, I don't, I, I don't know about you guys, and so Linux makes slap. I personally think that the Raptors should be able to hang with this Portland Trailblazers team. Hot take of the day, the Raptors probably shouldn't be losing to the Portland Trailblazers. To the Portland Trailblazers by 13 after six minutes. 
I personally think they're better than this. Portland got more talent on the floor. I I don't know about that. Um, let's let's go through here. So we've got quickly and Simons. I don't think that's far off. You probably give the edge to Simons, but I don't know. That's pretty even. We'll lean Simons here. Uh, Gary Trent and Delano Banton. Like, there's a guy starting for the Dribblers who didn't make the Raptors roster. Okay. Clear advantage Raptors there. Then we move to Chris Murray and Grady Dick. Okay. Grady Dick's better. As Gary Trent throws it down. Um, then we move to Kamara, who's actually decent, and Abaji. Ah, uh, yeah, that's probably pretty close. And then we have Olinik and Aiden. Like, Aiden's not that good. You know, it's probably more even than I thought, but it's like... Uh, I guess their top end talent is better on their starting five, but their complete five is not as good as this Raptors. Like the further down you go, it's probably more even than I thought it would be. But even still, um, 22 to eight is too much, man. It That's too much, man. I don't know if I go Anthony Simons is way better than Emmanuel Quickly. Like, if you let Emmanuel Quickly go crazy shooting-wise, could he do something like this? But even still, um, that, yeah, that's definitely too, that, the Raptors is definitely not 22-8 bad. We can definitely buy. We can definitely get to. Uh, we can definitely catch the Grizzlies in the tank race, guys. <laughs> um, I don't know about you guys. Raptors can definitely catch the Grizzlies here. Much better seller IQ stats won't say it because Nick's using Spark pick up the bench numbers. With us though, it show he's a clear better facilitator. I I I agree. Simon is better, but I'm not going to say way better. Can you quickly dunk? I'm uh I'm sure he can. I I, I does I, I I it appears that he doesn't do it much though. It appears he doesn't do them much. Simon's a better score. I, I got to give it to him. Raptors now have 9.5% uh, to get the first pick. It ain't nothing. Uh, it ain't nothing. Definitely ain't nothing. Well, how bad can it get, I suppose, is what we'll uh, wait and see. But, yeah, things are not good out the gate.
for this Raptors team right now. This is crazy, man. This is crazy. Down by this much? God damn. All right, 22 to 8. Bench Brigade, Brigade entering the game for the Trailblazers. This is going to be a rough watch. Boucher to Grady, sorry, to Gary Trent. Gary Trent connects to three against his former team. And it is 22 to 11. Do not adjust your monitor, <laughs> whatever. This is the real score. Simons from the outside. No good. 22 to 11 as Freeman Liberty loses it, turns it over to out of bounds for a Blazers ball. I'd love to know if the RJ news was for real tanking, but I can't be certain. Scoot Henderson checks in for the Blazers. Man, they really start banting over Scoot. That is, uh, Scoot Henderson not had the best of rookie seasons here. Uh, as he loses the handle here, turned over, Freeman Liberty all the way to the other rim and finishes, lays it in, and it's a nine-point game. All right, we got some time, I suppose. Uh, Noara in the game with Boucher, Freeman Liberty, Gary Trent, and oh no. Oh no. Jalen McDaniels, boys. And potentially girls. Jalen McDaniels is playing. I don't know about y'all. But I did not want to see Jalen McDaniels minutes today. <laughs> this is going to be a rough one. Gotta, gotta be honest, guys. Uh, it's Saturday. I plan to enjoy some beers. And I'm not sure where this stream is going to go here. I don't got to go to the gym tomorrow. I don't got to work. I just got to haul my ass out of bed at 9 and get to brunch. I'm watching a, a five-man lineup of Freeman Liberty, Trent, Noara, Boucher, and McDaniels. And that Gary Trent 3 is just made it worse. I'm going to enjoy some drinks and, and just see what happens. If, if it turns into a shit show on court and on the stream, I apologize. If it turns into just food, talk, I don't apologize. But I, I got to say, guys, I, uh, I, I, I cannot confirm or deny where this stream is going to go today. All right, anyways, uh, RJ Barrett's out with an illness. He was a very late scratch. He was announced in the starting five and then removed after the fact. RJ Barrett out with an illness today. Donna Banton for three. Ah, <laughs> uh, jeez. 27-13 Portland in the corner by quickly to, well, nobody. It was a bad pass, out of bounds. Portland basketball. <laughs> RJ suffering tankinitis, indeed. Door shot did go down the gate. Well, welcome, Thomas Berry. Door shot was a, was a smooth, nothing but net on the angle today. We got it today. Here's Delano Banton, one on one with Boucher. Step back two. Mmm. Delano, baby. 
and then quickly turns the ball over at the point. Thibel, floater, and it is a 31-13 to game. 9-0 run by Portland, I think they said. Listen, Flynn is, sorry, Banton's not very good, by the way. Like, Banton's also not very good. Noara puts it up, and uh, is that an M1? Why is it 31 13? I don't know. Banton is still not very good, guys. I, again, re reiterating my stance. Thirty-one sixty, Jude. Delano wanted to leave. Listen, the Raptors wanted to keep him. They would have signed him. Like, they would they would have figured it out. Not really a valid reason to let a guy walk for free when he's an RFA. Like, if, if they wanted to trade him, they if they sorry they, if if he wanted to go, then they would have traded him. And, and look, Raptors let him go for nothing, and Boston traded him for nothing. Like, two teams gave up on him. McDaniel's to Boucher shot clock violation. You know. Or sorry, the end of the quarter. Uh, you know, Jalen McDaniels, if there's a second left on the clock, you should probably shoot the basketball instead of passing and running at a time. Jalen McDaniels just passed it with no time left on the clock. I, I don't really know what to tell you guys. Pretty uh, elementary stuff here. Um, okay, you know what? It's late. I've had contacts and all day. My eyes are bothering me. I'm going to do a rare thing here and just throw on the glasses and make myself a little bit more comfortable for the stream. I'll be right back, guys. 100 people here while I'm gone. Smash that like button. I don't even think I've ever done a watch along with my uh, my eyeglasses on, but I yeah I I woke up at at seven thirty, put in my contacts. I've been wearing them for the last fifteen hours. Yeah, more comfortable. Like this. Yeah, the pressure to chew a thing's really weird. I, I don't know how all of a sudden he's a competent basketball player again. He was genuinely horrible. Uh the the prospect I like 
uh, for the upcoming draft. Um, just on my preliminary sort of look in is Rob Dillingham. That's a guy I'd be looking at. Uh, new super chat came in from Adam Wetstein. Thank you so much for yet another super chat here, Adam. I really appreciate it. Um, Tight thought exercise. Should Toronto go for a WNBA team? I, I, yeah, I, I think so. I think they'd do well. Absolutely. Boucher to Noir down low up top to Freeman Liberty. Layup is good, barely. I, I get it. In New York, he's playing a simplified role. I, I don't really know... I mean, I, I, I've said that a bunch, but I, I don't know why that couldn't have been done by Toronto. but Because it's not like there's a ton of talent around New York right now. They're faltering. They have a ton of injuries. So I don't know. Yeah, I... well, <laughs> kind of weird, but... You know, I, I don't regret get letting go of him. I thought he was pretty crap, but crazy. Yeah, they might be able to get Dillingham. Um, that's the guy I'm looking at. If they keep playing like this, they'll get him. That's for fucking sure. No Shaden Sharp, no Malcolm Brogdon, no Rob Williams, no Jeremy Grant, no Jabari Walker. And uh, down by 20. Down by fucking 20. The Portland fucking Trailblazers. That's true. Darker doesn't simplify things. He's, he's democratic. Everybody's got to do everything. I'm not going to read that, Phoenix, but that was funny. Thirty-eight to twenty. It's we're only ten minutes. In. We we got we got ten and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Banton for three. Contested three. For fucking Delano Banton. Christ, man. Noir a three. Answers. Huge three to cut the lead to 18. Uh, we should be surprised. Like, guys. <sighs> We're bad. We're not down 20 points in the second quarter to the Portland Trailblazers bad. At, at least we shouldn't be. I, I didn't bet my wedding money on the game. I bet 50 bucks. Uh, that 50 bucks could have bought me a Cairns Taipans jersey. What a shame. Barge is really good, huh? <laughs> it's 50 bucks what I should spend on a wedding. <laughs> Little Josh says, this is a must, must win. Well, I'll tell you, we're off to a rough start, Joshy. It's all right. 50 is my unit size. It's fine. Not like, I, not like I've had days where I've lost a lot more than 50 or won a lot more than 50. Not like I haven't had those, rather. Jeez, a lot of Raptors fans out here in the crowd tonight. That's a rough, this is a rough one to go to. <laughs> Eddie says you're a real tro trooper to host these lives, bro. Um, was the Tampa season this bad, guy? Guys, was Tampa wasn't this bad. Like, they lost a lot of games, but I, unless I'm remembering, 
incorrectly, like they weren't getting pumped like this by bad teams. Like twenty seven forty five. Um I you know, I'm looking at the the there are some pretty foul losses in here, to be fair. Oh, my God. This one to Detroit. I was looking for specifically this one. In the month of March, the Raptors won one game, by the way. And it was against the Denver Nuggets, and they blew them out. Where's the Lakers game? This is the Lakers game. Kyle Lowry's final game for the Raptors. Man, they lost seven in a row in the year. This was a true ultimate tank job, eh? They lost seven in a row to end that season. They lost one, two, three. They lost 10 of their last 11. And that got them freaking Scotty Barnes, boys. That got them Scotty Barnes. We did suck. Jeez, look at post All Star break. This is how you fucking tank, guys. This is how you tank. From the All Star game onwards, look at the red. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-two, thirty-two, thirty-four, thirty-five, thirty-six, thirty-seven. Twenty-seven losses post All Star break. 10, oh, what did I say? Did I say 27? I think 27. 10 and 27 post All-Star break. No, that can't be right. Am I counting? Anyway, they lost a lot. This team knew how to fucking tank. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Look at the guys on this team. DeAndre Bembry. Freddie Gillespie, Rodney Hood, <laughs> Paul fucking Watson, ah, oh, DeAndre Bembry. Oh, I forgot he played for the the Bucks briefly after he left. Uh, and Brooklyn, he was. How would he do for us? Five point seven points per game, fifty one games. We let DeAndre Bembry play fifty one games. And he shot 51%. Damn. 19 minutes a game as well. Twelve five run for the Raps, I'm hearing from Matty D. This guy stunk. Did I pull up the Gillespie? Oh, Paul Watson. Oh, my God. 4.1 points per game. 27 games. But hey, in the in the midst of Paul Watson's season, he did have a 30 point game. And I'm gonna show you. He had a 30 point game on the first night of a back to back. The second night of the back to back, he had zero fucking points. Let's find it. 30 points. Oh, it was a second, it was a second of back to back. I apologize. 30 points against Orlando. Shot 8 of 11. Two days later, the very next game, he goes 0 of 10. Oh, sorry. He went, he went 10 of 13, 8 of 11 for 3. Two days later, he goes 0 of 10, 0 of 6 from 3, 0 points. And that, <laughs> I didn't know this, that was his final game in a Toronto Raptors uniform. I did not know that until right now. I remember vividly the 30-point game and the zero-point game. And for the next 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, he was inactive. And with the final five, he did not dress. Oh, 
Paul Watson Jr. The most up and down final two games for any team ever. It, it has to be. 30, then zero, then never plays for that team again. God damn. That's funny, man. That is that is funny fucking shit. Where's Paul Johnson now? What do you mean Paul Watson? Um, I think he's in Europe. Let's see. Paul Watson, not the not the whale savior guy. Um, this guy. Uh, he oh he plays in the G League actually. Well, what's my guy saying in the G League? Let's see what our guy's doing in the G right now. Uh, okay. 14.3 points. 20 games played in the regular season. Showcase Cup. Okay. 10.5 points on 40% shooting. In the So in the Showcase Cup, he's played 15 games. He shot 40%. But in the regular season... He shot 52% in 20 games. That's a very weird split. This guy's a baller. 47% on threes, 52% from the field. But in the, in the showcase cup, he's just dog shit for some reason. Uh, weird, but all right. Shout out Paul Watson. Still doing his thing. Good for him, dude. Thought I wasn't playing for the Sharks. <laughs> Doesn't, uh, there is a, there's two former NBA players. Is McDaniels gets a bucket. There are two former NBA players who play for the Shanghai Sharks right now. Uh, let me look up the Shanghai Sharks roster. Uh, Let's see. Eric Bledsoe. That's it. Eric Bledsoe uh, is a uh, current Shanghai Shark, as is Noah Vonley plays the Shanghai Sharks. Ke Kelly O'Neill just hit a three. Kind of back in this game now. Dwayne Bacon also plays the Shanghai Sharks. A few. Noah Vonley. Was he on the Celtics last year? Ben Simmons did not play in China. No. I don't know what the future of Gary Trent holds. I don't know. Simons for two. Got it. All right. Enough, enough of that. Let's, let's get back in the game here. Nah, Ben Simmons never played in China. McDaniels in the corner wasn't ready for the pass, so couldn't shoot it because he just wasn't ready. Perhaps that's for the best. Freeman Liberty to a Linux. Shot clock at four. Gary Trent. Got to force up something. And he picks up the foul and one. Chance to trim this lead to nine. All right. Are they going to cover the spread or what? This team confuses me too, that, that Canadian. Kevin Durant had 45 and 10 tonight. They still lost to the Celtics by 10 points. With Jay Tatum tuning 10 of 27. I Look... I can't believe people are saying this guy's the MVP of the league. <laughs> Honest to God. He, he's very good, but he is not a top five player. The Celtics truly have one of the most stacked rosters I've ever seen. It is top heavy. It is filled out. It's got everything. 
Uh, not a great Eastern Conference as well. Like they don't even have a tough road to get there. Bucks are down. Knicks are injured. Cavs aren't like a true threat to them as good as they are. Um, Sixers won't have a healthy Embiid. Like they should walk to the to the finals. But unless Milwaukee figure their shit out. Yeah, Shea, Shea or Yoke. I mean, Yoke is MVP. That. Yoke is the MVP. 51-39 is Simons. Looks, that's not Simons, is that? It's Kamara. Aiden at the rim finishes it, and it's a 53-39 game. 4.26 to go in the second quarter. Quickly to Olenek. Hand off to McDaniels. Don't shoot, bro. And he jumps and lands and keeps moving. That's a trap. Dude. <sighs> Jalen McDaniels is so fucking bad at basketball. He just jumped and landed and took a step and tried to keep playing. Earlier in the game, he passed the ball as the shot clock was expiring. I told you I was a shit signing when we got him. And, and you guys, a lot of you guys resented that take. Gave me shit for that take. <laughs> he is, he is really bad. He, he shouldn't play, like, even in these games. Is he, is he better than, he got subbed out. He got subbed out right after that. <laughs> he got subbed out immediately. Uh. Is, is he better than DJ Carton, Jemias Ramsey? I don't know if he is. He's And he's got another year in his contract. He's really bad. Like, he was actually decent for the Sixers last year. Olenek, three. Still a double-digit game. 55-44. Jalen McDaniels is awful, man. And his brother Jaden is so good. Isn't it so weird, guys? We always have this shit end of NBA brothers. Who are who have we had? So we have uh Jonte Porter, brother of Michael Porter. We have Jalen McDaniels, brother of Jaden. Who are the other uh shit brothers? The shit version of the brother. Who who else have we had? Or is it just those two? What's Aiden's contract? He's on a max. He's not that good. I thought he'd actually have a really good year. Uh, he's not that good. Man, he's not good. Uh, he's, not, he's good. He's not that good. I guess we had Marcus All, who's technically worse than Pau Gasol. You're not wrong. We had the worst of the brothers. That being said, Marcus All, I think, has a very strong claim to be a Hall of Famer. Is he as good as Powell, who's already in the Hall? No, but like, kind of. Yeah, Aiden got the max. The, the, he got, the Suns got bullied into giving him the max. He's making... 32.5 this year, 34 next year, and 35.5 the year after that. It was a rookie max extension. Um, yeah, they got, um, they decided they'd rather pay him too much rather than lose him for nothing. And, and granted, they were able to trade him and everything worked out for Phoenix. But yeah. Now, I know that's Phoenix's other account, bro. 
Phoenix, get get off your alt account, bro. And his attitude is shit as well. But yeah, Aiden signed to Max. Champagnes are both ass. Um, well, I guess Julian is an NBA rotation player, albeit for the Spurs, whereas Justin doesn't play in the NBA. I don't know. I don't know who's better there. I, I still like Justin Champagne. I, I still wish something could have worked out there. T Mac and Vince are cousins. They're cousins, yeah. Oh, geez. Chris Jones resigned for the Chiefs. Good for them. They should sign that short YouTube genius basketball player. I'm not that short. Who are the other ones? Gasol is better than Gasol. You're you're tripping, bro. You're full of shit. Justin played for the 76ers, doesn't he? Champagne, that is. Champ. Justin Champagne. I see a Washington jersey. He plays for the Capital City Go-Go's, the Washington Wizards G League affiliate. It's a 15-point game, ladies and gentlemen. With the Wizards, I didn't know that. If we, if we did a who he played for, I would have lost. All right, uh, 145 to go in the second. This game's a joke. All right, put a uh, NBA... Uh, at, put, a, put a basketball player... In, in the chat, and I gotta, and let's play who we play for. Who he play for? Actually, we can do, uh, yeah, Q and A, Q and A. Who he play for? I've never done a Q and A before. All right, I started a Q and A, so I don't know how this works. Um, but there's like you, you, the viewers. I, I think you guys like posting a Q and A. Like your questions, I I have no idea how this works, but apparently, like you guys, I don't know. All it is is like up top it says who he play for, or I don't know if you can type somewhere. Um, just post a player, and I gotta guess who he play for. Is it working? I don't see any. Okay. I, I see 130 people here. I, I feel like somebody has put an answer. I don't see any answers though. How does this, how does this work? Hover your mouse. How does this work? It's not really working. It's not really working here. Okay, some questions are coming in now. Sure didn't. So it's not really, it doesn't really work. Okay. It doesn't really work. Okay. I'm going to end the Q&A. Just, I'm sorry. I, I'd never done it. I want to see what it's like. Just put your, put your who he play for in the chat. Put, put your who he play for in the chat. First half is over. Uh, I'll finish my beer before I get another. What am I saying? I was yeah. I'll I'll, I'll uh, finish my beer before I um, go to the bathroom. Uh, all right, let's see. All right, we got some good who he play for us here. Um, you know, I was hoping I would like be able to get one out the gate, and <laughs> you guys are posting a bunch here. And I, uh, I I don't have an answer to like any of them. Okay, 
So we're going to start here with Quincy Doby. Is that a real basketball player? <laughs> that sounds like a guy who played in the 70s. That sounds like a made-up name. That sounds like uh, the starting small four of the Flint Tropics, man. Quincy Doobie. Brooklyn Nets. That's my guess. Quincy Doobie. Former professional basketball player. Okay. I, I knew it was fake. All right. Uh, Terrence Williams. Oh. Is he in the NBA? Put guys who are in the NBA. Well, actually, put guys who are still active professional basketball players. Now, Terrence Williams might be one. Terrence Williams. I don't know. Um, let's guess Detroit. Terrence Williams. Uh, is a football player. He's a wide receiver. For the Galgos de Tijuana of Liga de Football Americano Profesional. Okay. Bobby Jackson. Is that just Gigi Jackson? So let's say Grizzlies. Bobby Jackson. Bobby Jackson. Uh, a, a, a coach. Okay. Put guys who are current professional players, please. Jackie Moon. Flint Tropics, baby. Jalen Harris. Oh, he signed somewhere. Is he still a Scarborough shooting star? Didn't an NBA team take him? I'm going to guess Scarborough shooting stars. But I'm pretty sure he got an NBA deal. Jalen Harris is on the Windy City Bulls. Fuck. I could have gotten that. I could have gotten that. Jerome Robinson. No, no, no. Ah, oh, where did I see him? Uh, the Raptors played against him this season. Who does Jerome Robinson play for? Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I can get this. Jerome Robinson. Oh, I can get, I can get Jerome Robinson. That's a good one, though. 2003 MJ. Damn, I, I'm going to guess I gotta come up with a guess. I'm gonna quickly look up the NBA standings just so I can see the team. Not looking up the Jerome Robinson. If I see the team, it might oh fucking bullshit doesn't work. If I see the team, I might clue in. Fuck, no. Let's try Brooklyn. Golden State. Right! Played for Golden State. That's it. I remember now. I could have gotten that shit, too. I, I could have gotten that shit. All right, let's do a couple more of these. Um, Scotty Pippen Jr. Is he still on the Lakers? Scotty Pippen Jr. going to try the Lakers. Scotty Pippen Jr. is Memphis Grizzly. I suck. I suck at this game. Leaky Black.
Ash Ketchum. <laughs> uh, Leaky Black. Another guy that raps played. Is he on Charlotte? Charlotte. We got one. We got one. We got one. Leaky Black. Charlotte. Bull Bull. S S Phoenix, because we just played him. I knew that. Dylan Windler. I'm not convinced that's real. Nick Van X wasn't playing the NBA anymore. Dylan Windler is, in fact, a real basketball player playing for the Atlanta Hawks. I have never heard of him in my life. Kevin Porter, prison 76ers. RJ Hampton, Christ. RJ Hampton is in the NBA? Maybe not, I guess. RJ, I have no idea who RJ Hampton plays for. Let's try the Capital City Go-Go's. Isaac, we're playing who he played for. Give me, give, me a, give me a player. We're playing who he played for. Uh, RJ Hampton. So far, I'm like one of eight. RJ Hampton plays. Oh, he, he does play for the Washington Wizards. Does he play for the G League? Does he play for the Capital City Go-Go's? He currently plays for the CU Falls. He did play this season for the Capital City Go-Go's. I'm... I am going to count that as a as a correct answer. He plays for the Wizards right now and has played for the Capital City Go-Go's this season. I am going to count that. Admiral Schofield. Oh. I'm pretty sure I don't know why. My my gut reaction says Admiral Schofield is in the Atlanta Hawks system. I'm just going to guess the NBA team if they play for their G League affiliate accounts. Oh, I play for the Magic. I knew that. No, I knew that. I fucked up. I should have gotten that. My bad. Chris Dunn. Chris Dunn starts for the Jazz. Chris Dunn is a Utah, is a, is a Utah Jazz, baby. He's starting. That one he starts. You gave me a, a bit of a layup there. Schofield is still in the Magic. I, I could have gotten that. Um... Chris Dunn is on the Jazz. Got that one. That one was, was the easiest one of the day. Hersey Hawkins. Ain't no way he's real. Hersey Hawkins. Spell it correctly. If I typo your name by one letter and it's, and Google doesn't correct it, you're not famous enough. Um, he. Hersey Hawkins. He's out of the. Uh, uh, he is not in the league <laughs> anymore. <laughs> All right, let's do a couple more of these. Isaiah Thomas. Ah, oh, somebody just signed him. A G League team just signed Isaiah Thomas. Um, is it Denver. I think it was like Denver or Utah or Indiana. I think Isaiah Thomas is in the Utah Jazz system. Yes, he plays for Salt Lake City. Got it. 
Got it, got it, got it. Malachi Branham, uh, San Antonio Spurs. Got that one. Jason Preston. I've never heard of uh, Jason Preston. Jason Preston is on the Utah Jazz. Oh, he's at Ohio. Uh, that former Ohio point guard. Yeah, he was sick in March Madness one year. Uh, Vasilye Micic plays for the Charlotte Hornets. That one I got. Uh, Kessler Edwards. I think he's still on the Kings. Hey, so I'm going to say Kings. Kessler Edwards is on the Sacramento Kings. No, Isaiah Thomas actually signed for a team. So got that. Uh, okay, Pete Nunts. That's that's gotta be a fake name. That, that's got it. Bro, no way your name is Nunts. Oh P Pete Nance. Well, anyways, I don't know who that is. Damian Jones. Brooklyn, guessing. Damian Jones. Cleveland. <sighs> Musa Diabate. Let's try Charlotte. I don't know. Luke Mba Amute. I'm pretty sure Luke Mba Amute has the single game record for plus minus. Musa Dibas plays for Clippers now. Amir Coffey plays for Clippers still, doesn't he? Okay, a couple more of these, then I'm going to go to the bathroom. Amir Coffey plays for Clippers. Uh, yeah, Luke and Bob Mote. I, think he, I don't think he currently plays in the NBA, so let's say nobody. Yeah, former basketball player. Um, best... Plus, minus, by NBA player, single game. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Luke and Plus 57 versus Denver Nuggets. Uh, not to be mistaken by the second highest of all time, Gary Trent Jr. <laughs> Against the Golden State Warriors in the tank season. Um, Sa Siakam is, is pretty high on this list. But Gary Trent's number two. What happened to this Gary Trent Jr., huh? Wow. Luke and Bamute. Why are no other Rockets players this high, even though they won by... What happened to this game that... And Bob Mute is a plus 57, but like no other Houston Rockets players in like the top 20. That's strange. Um, all right. Armani Brooks, I have no idea who he plays for. Um, we'll do three more, including Armani Brooks. Armani Brooks plays for the Ontario Clippers, the LA Clippers G League affiliate. Didn't know that. Marshawn Brooks. I have no idea who that is. So 0 for 2. He plays for the Guangdong Southern Tigers. Meow. <laughs> Shaq meme. <laughs> and final one, Kaita Bates Diop. Unless he got traded, he's still on the Suns. He got traded. Great. He plays for the Nets. Rip. All right, last one, Luca Garza. Oh, who's he play for now? He was on Detroit. I want to say Minnesota. Luca Garza plays for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Let's fucking go. All right, that's it for who he play for. That was more fun than watching this game. As the third quarter has already begun. We played who we play for for the entire halftime. And it's uh it's a it, it's 65-48.
Um, I'm going to go get another beer. I'm going to go to the bathroom, and I'll be right back. we got second half on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Am I a casual or what? <laughs> I didn't get a lot of those. All right. How about we name name let, let's name random mid two thousands NBA players. You know, just just name and be like, yeah, that guy. Charlie Villanueva. Anderson Verjao. Yeah, man. Did he ever win a ring? He was on a lot. He was on the Cavs and the Warriors in that in that stretch. Did he ever Did he ever get the Did he ever be on a team that won the chip? <sighs> Anderson. He didn't. He played with Cleveland when they lost to Golden State. Then he went to Golden State when they lost to Cleveland. No, he was here. He was 15-16. He was with... Or wasn't he like Golden State, then Cleveland, then Cleveland, then Golden State? I don't know. It does not give him credit for an NBA championship. That's a shame, Anderson. Zydrunas Ig Ilgauskas. I believe that is one of LeBron James's most productive teammates of his career, actually. Mike Bibby. Good player. A lot of, my, a lot of Mike Bibby jerseys out there because Vancouver. Lamar Odom. And his first move as executive was to sign Lamar Odom, who was on crack. Steve Francis, part a, a, a major catalyst in Vancouver becoming Memphis in the NBA. Steve Francis. Vancouver drafted him, and he said, I am not playing for Vancouver. And that's it. He didn't. They traded him because he, he would not show up. But uh, I think it was a couple-time All-Star. Uh, tell you what, guys, Emmanuel quickly for three. We got a 14-point game here. Would Grady be top 10 in a redraft? Oh, it's a morning. He's a Hall of Famer, isn't he? Mm, OJ Mayo. Oof. Fell off. All right, let's see. If we could redraft... So, is he better than Victor Ambiyama? No. Is he better than Brandon Miller? No. Is he better than Scoot Henderson? <laughs> Probably not in a redraft, but like, I don't know, man. We'll, pull, we'll give Scoot, we'll give Scoot the benefit of the doubt. Amon Thompson, Osar Thompson, you probably still draft ahead of him. Anthony Black is not a hundred percent. We'll give him half. Bilal Kulubali is good. You draft Bilal Kulubali ahead. That's six. Jairus Walker. I don't know. 
So we'll count as a half. So we'll go seven now. Taylor Hendricks. I don't know. Probably. It's a half. Case and Wallace ahead of Grady. Jed Howard. No. Uh, Derek Lively goes ahead of him. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Um, he probably goes top 10 in a redraft. He definitely in that conversation. Grady Dick's a lot better than uh, he was made out to be at the start of his Raptors career. That's for sure. Yi Jian Lian. I don't know who that is. I apologize. Anyways, guys, next beer up on deck here. Now, this is one I've had before. This is my favorite that something the water brewery make. We got the focus, please, focus, please, focus, please. Focus. Won't focus. The Lee River Blackberry Vanilla Beer. Doesn't say what type of beer. Sour beer. Blackberry Vanilla Sour Beer. The sixth overall pick. That's gracious. Let's get this down. Oh, am I am I casual? Is Utah keeping him a secret? I saw Mike Malone gave some slight shade to Bryce Sensabaugh today. You guys see that? Jared Dudley, NBA champ, baby. Southern water, blackberry vanilla, sour beer. That's really good. That's really good. Yeah. That's really good. Nice, sharp, sour taste. Not an overpowering fruit, but it's there. Fruit taste, but it's there. Who's the uh who are the worst players to win an NBA championship? So, like, the Raptors handed some rings out, man. Jordan Lloyd, I'm sorry to everybody who I mentioned here. But, like, Jordan Lloyd, Eric Moreland, Malcolm Miller, Jody Meeks. Like, we're talking about guys who are out of the league right after they won a championship. How are they even on the Raptors roster? I don't even know how that happened. Eric Moreland, Malcolm Miller, Jody Meeks, and Jordan Lloyd. Like, jo- jo- okay, Jody Cheeks is like one thing because he had like an actual NBA career. But like Jordan Lloyd, Eric Moreland, Malcolm Miller, how the hell did those guys finesse a championship roster spot? You know what I mean? That's crazy. Patrick McCaw, in the first three seasons of his of his NBA career, correct, was a champion. I'm pretty sure he won a G League championship the year after that. Not the year after that, but he did win in 2023. So he's a three-time NBA champ and a G League champion as well with the Delaware Blue Colts. Three rings. Meanwhile, Carmelo Anthony, Charles Barkley, Chris Paul, no rings. Patrick McCaw, three of them. Patrick got one two chips with Steph. <laughs> Super fan. Super fan does have a ring. <laughs> That's where Terrence Davis is. Terrence Davis is still on the, the Kings, isn't he? Not quite on the uh the, the, 
the <laughs> the prison team. Uh, oh, he's in the G League now. He plays for the Rip City Remix. Yeah, it didn't work out for him. Definitely doesn't help your career if you punch your girlfriend in front of your child. Or is that not him? He punched his girlfriend. Maybe not in front of a child. Was he strangled? I don't know. Doesn't help your professional sports career to cause physical harm to your significant other, by the way. I'd recommend not doing that. Although Miles Bridges is doing okay, so maybe uh, maybe it's just a small sample. I mean, Carl Malone did one of the most like egregious things ever. This guy judged the dunk contest to last season, so I don't know, man. Like I said, it can't help your career if anything it will hinder it though 76 61 657 to go in the third this post game show i don't know how i'm gonna do it guys this is we we have been everywhere and back today i'm gonna watch kung fu panda 4 i gotta be honest i have only seen the first one so uh, I, I won't be caught up if I watch the next one. How's Carmel still respected? Man, if you help a, a sports team win sports games, you can do whatever the hell you want. If you're helping a team win, nobody gives a shit. It's unfortunate. Especially in the NFL. Man, if you can help a football team win, oh, man, don't even worry about it. Don't even worry about it. Do whatever the hell you want. I got the redraft save for the member exclusive stream. Next one. I got the 2020 NBA draft redraft. Don't you worry. This game is cooked, though. We're having some fun. I'm, I'm having fun still. Who are we even playing? The Trailblazers. We got starters on right now. 77-64 as Chris Murray hits the backboard on his three. That's not good. Aiden has it stolen. Can we get a bucket here? No, we're not out of it. We can still win this. Olenek layup will help. It's an 11-point game now. Who punched their mother? Who did that? Did, did any player do... Bro, you punched your mother. You're just, I, I'm typically against capital punishment, but in this case, maybe not. Gary Trent down low, lays it in. Back to 11-point game. Malone should have, like, never stepped foot on an NBA floor, man. Another three for Portland. Every time we get a bucket, it's just. Every time we get a bucket, they just get it back. Grady Dick for three. Here we go. 11 point game. 82 71. Great return the game off. Still alive. Well, thank you. Glad you guys still enjoy the stream. I guess if, if we got people who watch me make chitza, then I can do whatever I want. I mean, Malone is the third highest point scorer in NBA history. So, yeah, there's there's that. Game is background noise. What have we come to, huh? What has this team become? What does Darko need to do to get fired, honestly? I feel like Darko could give the finger to the Scotiabank Arena crowd and he still wouldn't get fired. I don't think... I, I think his job is very safe. 
I, I feel as though there's absolutely no pressure on him, to be honest. Now, I love y'all excited for the Temple Zone. I don't think we'll get there. I, I think Darko will hold out hope for a while here. I think I'm usually good at play-by-play, -play, Gregory. Not tonight. I said... I said in the first quarter that this stream, I, I, I don't know where it's going to go, but yeah, I, I, to, to sit through this game is really tough. 84-73 uh, as Gary hits mid-range. I mean, it's not even out of the question the Raptors come back here, but I mean, when they were down 38-18, I wasn't holding out a lot of hope. Simon's oh offensive foul nice all right uh players like Darko for sure that's a draw to have he's just not a very good uh basketball head coach <laughs> um he's not a very good at putting out winning strategy and execution which is probably the most important part of coaching basketball but players love him that you cannot dispute that i think darko will get minimum two full seasons justice i don't know you can handle this shit sometimes um it's easier with you guys watching with me and chatting with me. Like, if I'm just sitting here quietly watching, like, I'm not watching anymore. Uh, game's off. But, yeah, I'm hanging out with you guys. Like, you can't deny there's been improvements with, like, individual players. The problem is, like, how much can you, can you attribute that to Darko rather than the player? Like, Scotty Barnes. Like, would Scotty Barnes not have gotten better on his own without Darko? Like, I feel like he still gets better. As Gary Trent, it's a three. And we got we got an eight-point game here. It's an eight-point game. I mean, we're in this game. Like, I think Scotty Barnes would have improved on his own. Grady Dick, like, sure, Darko has helped. But, like, would Grady Dick not have gotten better throughout the season with a different coach? He probably would have been fine, right? All right, we're, we're, it's an eight-point game now. And if McDaniels sorry, quickly hits his three, five-point game, and all of a sudden, you got me back here. Emmanuel quickly makes it a five-point game. 2.40 to go in the third. All right. Uh, I understand, like, wanting to wait till there's a better team to judge Darko. First of all, uh, I'd rather have a better coach when we have that good team. Second of all, uh, I'm okay with, like, you know, Grady to start the season was playing poorly. You never saw me turn on Grady Dick. So I'm like, there's a lot of really good signs as to where the improvement is going to come from. And it's plausible to see when this starts to click him improving. Whereas... Watching Darko coach the team, the decision-making overall. I have not seen any sort of sliver of evidence to suggest that things are on the way to improve and things are going to get better. Like, he's just... I, I consistently see so many examples of him not being a good coach. That it's not giving, making me hold out hope that things are just going to improve out of nowhere. Like, I see the progression. I saw the progression with Grady. I do not see where things are going to just build with Darko. That's why I'm I'm so lost for him. I lost on him. Um, but yeah, Raptors, a good fight back here to the third quarter. Five-point game out of nowhere. Many people would have turned off the game, as would I. But, you know, from 38 to 18 or however... Far it got when the Raptors were down by 20. We're here. Like I said, they're going to give him another season. If it was up to me, 
Jordy Fernandez is available, and I don't want to waste that opportunity. But I don't put it past him to turn things around, become a, a, a quality head coach, but I don't see it. I, I just don't see it. But could he surprise us? Absolutely. My preference is he turns it around and turns into a really good coach and uh, leads this team for the future. Just don't really see it myself. But they do get crazy assist numbers. That's true. So what do I know? They just uh, they pass the ball a lot and s score off them. Yeah, again, I recognize you know it's a tough situation for him with a new team, new players, all that. But uh, yeah, a lot of incompetency and um, not a lot of positive signs that like, okay, you know, this is going right. This is improving. It's Banton. It's a three. God damn, Banton's sharpshooting tonight. Yeah, but I guess he, he, they get a lot of assists, so he's a goat. He's a really good coach then, I guess. Anyways, time will tell. Um, bit too early to, for everybody to be definitive, but you know my stance. Uh, if, if he turns out to be a really good coach, figure this out. I hold my hands up and say I was wrong. Thankfully, they kept him in. But uh, I don't see it, as I said. I don't like the argument that he wants to play a certain way and we don't have the players for it. Um, yeah, if you're a good coach, you adapt to the players you have and you figure out how to win with the players you have. So running the least amount of isolations in the NBA when Pascal Siakam is on your team, yeah, that's really bad coaching. Uh, because Siak was a very good isolation player. The Raptors offense sucked when he uh, has sucked all year. And yeah, not using your best offensive player to the best of his abilities, that's horrible coaching. Straight up. Like, you know, there's a bunch of guys who can coach a team that's exactly catered to their system. Uh, yeah, if you're a really good coach or a good coach in general, you figure out how to get the most out of players that you have. And he has consistently not been able to do that. And, I mean, Nurse with this pretty much very similar team won 41 games. And the only reason the team is as bad as it is right now is because the Raptors made losing trades, future-oriented trades, because of how bad they were to start the season because the coaching was poor. I've always, like, I've been hesitant on Anthony Simons. I don't love Anthony Simons. As I said, um, yeah, the Phoenix game was a good example. How do you come out the gates and double off Grayson Allen? That's idiotic. It's inconceivable to, to, to me that somebody who is involved in basketball would not know not to do that. But. Um, yeah, look, if I'm, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'll hold my hands up and say I was wrong. I, I do agree, though. They, they did not do a great job of filling out his coaching staff for him. But, listen, if, uh, if he turns it around has a great Raptors career, that's great for the team. And that's great for me. But, um, I don't see it. I dig my hole deeper and deeper and deeper. Why well, I actually not digging a hole? I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm firmly on this hill. We'll say.
87-79. Ryan Repair playing. Goodness gracious. Wreath at the rim finishes. And, uh, well, the five-point game is now a ten-point game. They double KD. That's totally reasonable. Yes. You, uh, that's not what I said. What did I say? I said they doubled off Grayson Allen. That's dumb. I did. I have no problem doubling Kevin fucking Durant. My problem, which is what I said, is doubling off Grayson Allen. That's dumb. He is a very good three-point shooter who in the game before that was also on fire from three. It is objectively very dumb to leave him open. And it wasn't like rotations weren't there. Uh, by the way, doubling off strong side as well was very stupid because that's what they were doing. Doubling off Grayson Allen on the strong side. And it wasn't like rotation, you know, a guy was late running out with his hand up, didn't get there in time, missed his rotation. Nobody was even on the way over to Grayson Allen for a lot of those threes. It wasn't like, you know, Gary Trent's running over, hand up, late on the rotation. Like Nobody was taking account of Grayson Allen in any capacity whatsoever, you are not going to you're not going to try and tell me that that was a smart game plan. No, it's fine if the rotations are there, but they were not, and it was strong side. It was dumb. It was just it was it was dumb. It was very dumb. You had Royce O'Neal weak side. He could have doubled off that entire first quarter. They didn't do it. And if, and if the rotations, like, again, if a guy's on his way over, hand up, he's late, then I'll be like, yeah, rotations were late. She'll still shouldn't do it, even still, but at least rotations are late, and, you know, you blame the players. It wasn't even the case of that. Like, there was nobody on the way over trying to make that play. It wasn't even accounted for in the game plan. It, it, it's horrible. I don't know how this is being defended, honestly. Anyways. Uh, this game got to five at one point. Not anymore. Uh, a nice eight to eight to two run for Portland, and we are back to a double digits here, eleven point game. I don't, I, I can't keep doing this on this. I've said my piece on on the defensive strategy in the first quarter against the Phoenix Suns. Panthers having a really good game. I I I I want to I want to convey that this is not a typical Delano Banty performance. Last time out yesterday, yes, he did have thirty points, took twenty seven shots, inefficient. Uh, however, this is not a truly in uh, truly a performance that's indicative of how good he is. Uh, the Raptors, I do not really believe, were in the wrong to let him go. I do not agree with the fact that they were consistently very high on him throughout his second season and then let him walk. That was a pretty bad look on the front offense, front office, excuse me. But I do not really see a successful NBA career coming out of him. The fact that Delano Banton spoke with Toronto slang, I don't think factored into the decision of whether or not to keep him, to be honest.
you always get this with tanking teams, like when a guy gets a lot of touches and inefficiently does well. But like in a full regular season, I just do not see this level being sustainable for Delano Banton. Yeah, I, I always look back to that Spurs trade where Spur, the Spurs had interest in him. I strongly feel like the Raptors could have omitted a second round pick and traded Delano Banton there instead. So they kept a hold of him and did nothing with him. At least, you know, Trent's playing well. Quickly's playing well. Olenek's playing well here. Freeman Liberty's playing well here. At least we have some sort of positivity overall to go from this game. Uh, but, yeah, uh, this is... This will go down as a pretty ugly one here. But the Raptors at least have made this watchable for the fourth quarter. Only down by 11. Now we're going to look back on Banton in a few years. If Banton... Ooh, will Banton be in the NBA two years from now? 2026. Don't think... I honestly... Don't really think so. All right, we'll lock in here. 94-81, Raptors trying to get back into this. Boucher to the rim, picks up the foul, and Raptors are going to head to the line here. Chance of Trinus lead to 11. Grady Dick's been playing well. Um... Adjusting to the starter role here, a two of five from three. You know, not the most eye-popping performance, but uh, consistently been pretty decent here. Somebody, please, in chat, listen to Intelligent Investor. Get Delano Banton on the phone. Tell him that I said I do not think he'll be in the NBA in two years' time. Uh, I, I I did mention early in the game, though, as Rick Paw saying. Uh, this this strong spell of games here is probably going to put him into considerations for a Team Canada Olympic spot. If he wants to play at the Olympics, there's probably a roster spot available to him as he misses the three this time. Now nah, again, now nah, listen. If I if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But you you heard me. Yeah, some of my draft takes. I mean, yeah, some of them are bad. Some of them are good. The Barnes one. I mean, I I've owned up. Like I, uh, I I cannot. I could not believe the Raptors reached for Barnes at four. It it, it seemed like it was very possible to get Barnes. At least two, probably three or four spots later in the draft. And uh, it was apparent afterwards that was not the case. But did not want the Raptors to go with Scotty Barnes. Um, there was rumblings they were interested in him. But it was just like, that. What it was like, what was the point of getting the fourth overall pick? If you're going to take a guy, you can get it like seven or eight. But then... It became apparent OKC wanted him at six, couldn't trade down for him. So, yeah, ended up being the move they wanted their guy, so they got their guy. At the time, very much thought Suggs was the better draft pick, as did many, but at the time, saw, thought Suggs was the better draft pick, and I was like, if you're going to take Scotty Barnes, trade down and get him there instead. Very wrong. My worst draft take definitely is is uh, Franz Wagner. Of all the players I looked at ahead of that draft, Franz Wagner was like the top of the list of potential busts for me. And he's turned out to be a top three player from that draft class. So very wrong. Um, I I have got, I, I was very accurate on Shen Goon. Uh, I, I think I covered Kaminga very well. 
Mobley very well, which is easy. Cade, I, I oversold, to be honest. Um, Book Knight, I was horrible on that. I mean, Book Knight's like not even an NBA player at this point. No, people liked Franz. I don't think I was in the majority who didn't like Franz. Um, Moses Moody, I thought would go way higher, but I was I, I did like him, and that was a good call. Uh, David Mitchell, I also quite liked, and he hasn't really turned out to be that good. I didn't like, I didn't love him, but I liked him. I did really like Moses Moody. I had Moses Moody going seventh in that draft, actually, and he went 14th, which is also the Warriors, regardless, but that was a pretty good call, I think. Um, I really like Jalen Green. So that was a L take. I didn't like Josh Giddy. I had him 13th in my mock draft. That was pretty good. Wow, we got a comeback going on here. Emmanuel quickly for three. Anyways, yeah, dra calling the draft is very difficult. And uh, yeah, I, I, I've got some rough takes. Uh, I, yeah, I, everywhere. Not even just draft. I got rough takes all over the place. Thibault 3. Damn. Just a big response right away. The Kaminga trade has sailed. Boucher for 3. Responds right away. All right. We're in the game here. Four-point game. Scotty was very raw coming into the NBA. Uh, it just didn't seem like fourth overall pick material. Um, he shocked a lot of people, man, when he won Rookie of the Year. Uh, truly astonishing stuff, the way he, he, he rose that year. Full credit to the Raptors and him. I don't know. There was a... It, the, the the grand majority of Raptors fans wanted to suck. I don't know. Um, it was a bad take on my part, of course, but you know I, I wasn't exactly on an island with that take. Aiden at the rim finishes, and Darko calls a timeout. Raptors are working themselves back into this game here. Darko calls a timeout, just trying to settle things down for a moment. Do you think him getting picked over Suggs made him work harder? Um, I don't think so, but... It, it, it was very it, it seemed pretty apparent that he he wanted to be here and I, I think he would have succeeded anywhere I mean like look how good he is what do you think of Denny of Dia so here's uh another really bad draft take I love Denny of Dia heading into the 2020 draft and I was like I can't believe the Bulls didn't go with him number four then he slipped all the way to like nine and I was like that's a steal. Uh, he's decent. A solid role player, but he's not the player I thought he'd be pre-draft. Goodness gracious. Uh, Seamus Campbell has subscribed, though. Welcome to the Amateur Hour Army. Really, really appreciate that. Hope you're enjoying the Raptors content and NBA content here. Avdi is good. Don't get me wrong. I was very, very, very high on him. Like, I was very high on him. Um... To my expectations, yeah, I, I over I oversold it like crazy, uh, but he's a good player. He's a, he's a good role player. I, I do like him as a player, though. Good defender, uh, plays his role. Yeah. Would you have taken Mobley if you had the third pick? In hindsight, no, but absolutely, I'm. I have a great degree of confidence. The Raptors would have gone Mobley at two or three. They would have taken Evan Mobley. They wanted Evan Mobley. And he's good, but he, he's not Scotty Barnes. Tough. Yeah, bad. <laughs> yeah, got, I got that one wrong for the Raptors. Um, 2020, I was wrong on saying they should go. If they want a point guard, they should go Malachi Flynn. I was correct in my uh, guess, but I was wrong about the player, as were the Raptors. Um, 2022, Christian Coloco was 
the second highest player on my wish list at the time of the pick. My first choice was undrafted and is not even in the league anymore. Uh, this most recent draft, Grady Dick was the highest player on my wish list at the time of the selection. That one looks pretty good. What was my worst hot take? When I think of my worst hot take, Franz Wagner and Scotty Barnes, those two come into my mind. Um, I can't think of worse takes to like, to like look back and be ashamed on than the Barnes and Franz Wagner takes I had in that draft. Out of the timeout, the Raptors turn it over here. John Green, best center on the court. Can't deny that. <laughs> when he's the only center. As the Blazers hit a three. Matty D is laughing about something. I don't even know what's going on. But the Raptors all of a sudden back down by nine. What is Matty D laughing about right now? Raptors turn it over again. Out of the timeout, two turnovers. But then Banton turns it right back over. Gary Trent for three. Doesn't go. Gary Trent saw a wide open Jalen McDaniels and said, don't, nah, I'm not passing there. Quickly misses the three as well as out of bounds. Gary Trent full well saw Jalen McDaniels open for three and said, I don't think so, dude. And didn't give it to him. <laughs> I am sad we never got to see Christian Coloco at his at his max. He is uh he was a great talent. It's a shame. Man, sometimes you lose the life lottery. It sucks, man. Gary Grady Dick for two got it to go. All right, Grady. 102.95, Raptors have, uh, they well, they started up to nothing. Since then, they trailed throughout. They, they uh, took a 2 nothing lead, and that's it. Blazers uh, tied it, then hit a free throw, and another three by the Blazers, and we're back to a double-digit game here. 105.95, 5.53 to go. Smartest play I've seen Gary do in a long time. Uh, yeah, I don't think it was vaccine related. <laughs> Is Simon's playing? Yes. Just hit a three there. <laughs> 105.95. Um, weird lineup here as Boucher... Hits a three. Some crazy shots going down right now for the Raptors. 105-98. Anthony Simons misses the floater. Did Olenek... Did Olenek... Sorry, I, I briefly just like zoned... Did Olenek save that? I, I you missed something. Okay, cool. Somebody, okay, somebody saved it and turned it into an Aiden layup. 107.98. Five, sorry, 4.58 to go. Gray Trent turnaround jumper is good. Seven point game again. Top five most overrated players in the NBA. <laughs> you guys trying to get me in shit here. Anthony Simons for three. No good. Um, Gary Trent for three. Oh, in and out. That would have made it a four-point game again. Banton. Blocked by Olenek. Crowds the rebound as well. I'm trying to think of five players. I had two already. All right, I got three. Grady Dick, three-pointer blocked. Freeman literally tips it to 
to Gary Trent in and out on three again. Banton to Thibel in the corner for three off the mark. This game's hectic. I can't even think about overrated players right now. I got four. All right, I got time. I got four in mind. Overrated players. Who's my fifth? NBA, who was an all-star this year? Let me see if there's a guy in this list that I'll toss in. I got four. I got four in my mind right now. Uh, yeah, I already got a couple of these all-stars in mind. Uh, who do you guys think is overrated? Give me yours, and maybe it'll help me give pick my fifth. I have four. Let me write them so I don't forget. Give me, give me your most over. Demonstrative bonus, I think he's underrated if anything. Uh, Dylan Brooks is underrated if anything as well. There's no, yeah, you're right. There's no way I think Simone's overrated. I really like Sabonis, and so I think Simone's is very good. Who is overrated? Devin Bain's good. Hot take, Devin Booker. That that is a hot take. That is a hot take. I don't think Halliburton's overrated. I think he's very good. Um, he's very very good. Um, I'm looking at NBA standings right now. Derek White. Derek White is not overrated. Derek White is very, very good. Austin Reeves. I, I think it's cooled off with him a little bit. I wouldn't go him. Uh, Jason Tatum. Is he in my four I already have? Maybe. Not KD. No. Terry Rozier. I mean, who really rates Terry Rozier like that? Everybody knows Jordan Poole is ass. And he is ass. All right, I've got five. I got four. Here are my four. Four most overrated players in the NBA. Um, does, you know, Don Jr. is a good fifth. He is ass, but people kind of are starting to catch on to that. Number five, Dejounte Murray. This guy is a horrible defender, and he's living off of his reputation from years ago. He's ass. Uh, number four, Marcus Smart. Everybody thought it was such a genius trade for the Memphis Grizzlies to trade for Marcus Smart. The Celtics basically got picks and Chris Stapps Porzingis for Marcus Smart. Every GM in the, in the league overrated the shit out of Marcus Smart. He can't play offense. Everybody left him wide open in the playoffs the last few years. If he could hit three, perhaps, sorry, the Celtics could have had a champion, would have two championships in the last two years. He sucks. Therefore, he can't. Shouldn't have won DPOI. Number three. Hot take, Cade Cunningham. Cade Cunningham shoots the ball so fucking much. He's inefficient. He doesn't get other players involved in the game. Doesn't make players better. Barely makes himself any good out there. He just gets the ball a ton and shoots the ball a ton. Is an inefficient style of play. Should focus more on getting to the rim, but he can't because he's not good enough to do it. Doesn't shoot the three ball that well. Just takes a ton of middies, a ton of inefficient shots, doesn't set up his teammates very well. Even with a shit team like that, doesn't matter. When he plays on a good team, you'll see that he's not the guy that people think that he is. Number two on the list, Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown is not even like a top two player in the Celtics, let alone an all-star here. He's not as good as Porzingis. He's not as good as Derek White. Uh, he has no bag for himself, and he's playing against a serious team. He has no left hand, which everybody knows about. He turns the ball over like crazy in pressure situations. In pressure situations, he reverts to very ugly style of basketball in mid-range where he's not effective. Definitely not Jalen Brown. 
Number one, most overrated player in the NBA to this day. Been years. Still. As a man who quickly gives a three. Number one most overrated player in the NBA, Jason Tatum. It's been like that for years. Jason Tatum, when the going gets tough, Jason Tatum doesn't get going. He reverts to his ugly ass mid-range isolation style where he is not a killer. He is a super inefficient player when it matters most, when he has to come through in big time moments, get his own shot. He is crap. He cannot do it. He cannot hang. He cannot hang. He cannot do it. If he could, the Celtics would have won a championship last year. If he could, the Celtics would have won a championship the year before. When it's the big time situations, he cannot help himself but turn the ball over consistently. He cannot help himself but try to ISO guys in mid-range. If he played smart and the team did the talking and maybe with better coaching it would have been the case, they could have won. But when it's him and he has to win his, win the game, he doesn't do it. Look, he's a terrific player, but like considering him as an MVP, that's ludicrous. I, like You can make a case that if the Celtics win a chip, he can't be the finals MVP because when like he's got to do this stuff on his own, it just doesn't happen. It doesn't work out. Grady for three. That would have made a three-point game. We were right there. 111-105. Anyways, that's my list. A lot of hot takes. <clears throat> YouTube short. I, I, I listen, that opinion, like 103 of you I can handle. But if, uh, any more than that, jeez. They're hot takes. Scoot for three. Yeah, Scoot. Let Scoot hit Dennis and shoot that. Sabonis is not overrated. Dylan Brooks is very underrated at this point. Four-point game again. Bleach Report, that's dumb. Uh, Jonas Valanciunas is not overrated. Although, uh, maybe not over... Because like, he's such a bad defender, it hinders his ability. That's not a bad take. Kawhi is so fucking good. That is a horrific take. DeMar DeRozan. I, I, I don't love DeMar DeRozan's game. Raptors could... Oh, could they get a big steal here? Oh, the shot clock violation kind of kills the opportunity there. But it's a four-point game with a minute 19 to go. And beat is, and beat is not overrated. I, uh, oh. anyways, Zach Levine, Zach, I think Zach Levine's a bit overrated, actually. Vooch was ass. People know he's ass. 111, 107, quickly to the rim. All right, we got a two-point game here. We got a two-point game here. Can, out of nowhere, the Raptors cover the three-point spread? God fucking forbid they make me watch five extra minutes of this. Do not get, do not Give it over time. Embiid probably would have won MVP if he didn't get hurt. Simons blocking foul called there. 111-109. Raptors down. They were down by 20 in this game. They fought back, and Darko wants to challenge this one. All right. Two-point game. What's going on, my moderator Adam joining in? Anyways, my list. Uh, who did I put fifth again? I forget who I put fifth. Oh, DeJounte Murray. DeJounte Murray, Cade Cunningham, Marcus Smart, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum. Those are the five. Can you tell I don't like the Celtics as well? Abandoned game winner. I'm gonna have to go for a walk. I, I I just have to go for a walk through downtown Toronto. Maybe hit a dispensary on the way out. Just that sounds good right now. Like Banton dropped thirty yesterday. Paul Watson Jr. once scored 30 for the Raptors. Paul Watson Jr. scored 30 points in a game for the Raptors. 
and never scored another point for the franchise again. Oh, I, DeJounte Murray is so bad. I can't believe some of these takes. Something is an eagle. It's pretty tasty, buddy. Shea for MVP. He's in the discussion. Jokic had the monster night against the Celtics, though, which really, like, Jokic was firmly in the lead, and then that Celtics performance will just stick in the memory for a while. He is very much, by far, the MVP right now. Shante Murray's so ass, guys. He just gets the ball a lot right now, especially. He is a horrible defender, and he has no game on offense. That's efficient. Uh, out of the timeout, or, yeah, the challenge, Blazers, easy play there for two. Quickly, with two, for two, doesn't go. That might be the big one, but a loose ball foul. Do the Raps get the ball back here? Yeah, loose ball foul against the Blazers. So Raptors get the ball back, it seems. Beard tonight. Four of them. Yeah, that's a loose ball foul. That's the right call right there. Boucher providing the hustle as usual. 113-109. Trey Young is uh, very good. Trey has been to a conference final. I don't think you could say he doesn't impact winning. Olenek too quickly to Boucher at the rim. Doesn't go. But a foul. All right. Yeah, Trey Young led his team to a conference final. The problem is his team traded three first-round picks for a garbage point guard who doesn't fit next to him, first of all, and is not good. DeJounte Murray. I, I, don't, I think Trey Young is very good. His defense is improving, which is not being accounted for. He'll score 27 a game and like get like 10, 11 assists per game in the process. I very much think Trey Young's a great player. Trey Young will shock the world when he gets on a good team. And, um, yeah, they, they, that he's not paired next to a bad fit who is bad at basketball. DeJounte Murray. Lucas MVP this year. Uh, like, maybe for the Mavericks, but not the rest of the NBA. <laughs> They're challenging this? Twelve fifteen. It's late. Um, they probably won't win that challenge. Do I think Sky Barnes will win an MVP in his career? You have to say no. It's just so incredibly rare to win an MVP. Is it impossible? No, but my bet would be at even odds. My bet is no. So talking this out, it was a pretty quick review. So I don't think they will win this challenge. Defensive foul. So it's a four-point game. Raptors have fought back pretty well in the second half. But uh, 24.7 seconds to go. Boucher at the line in a four-point game. Can he bring this team back? Kamara's pretty good. I like Kamara. On paper, are the Mavs better than OKC? Nah. Mavs roster kind of sucks. They did a very poor job building around Luka. Boucher at the line. First free throw is good. If Luka cared about defense, that uh, they'd be a lot better, though. Second free throw, Boucher. Two-point game. 
anything but overtime, guys. So, can, oh my God, the Raptors almost got a steal. Raptors, oh, they will get a steal there. They will get a steal. They made the wrong call there. That was, that was off Simons. That was absolutely off Simons, but the Raptors just wasted their challenge. Oh, yo, that was absolutely off of Simons there. That is, how did they miss that? That's absolutely Raptors ball. They got the call wrong. Blatantly wrong, but we just wasted our challenge. I mean, it, it's so obviously off of Simons there. Jump ball. Oh my God. Like, it's so clearly off of Simons there. Unless Boucher's foot is in the line. It is so clearly off of Simons there. Wow. And now you got to go Aiden Boucher and a jump ball. Wow. Absolutely. Absolutely. A bad call there. How did they miss that? Like, it wasn't even close. It was so obvious. The kicks A now is with Simon Boucher. So the Raptors should win this jump ball. What the fuck is going on? These refs have lost the game. Kamara checks in for the Blazers for Delano Banton. Boucher should win this over Simons. Should. 20.7 seconds. Raptors would have a full shot clock if they get this. Boucher wins it to Trent. Two-point game. Shoot a three. Either we're winning or losing. We ain't going to overtime. Quickly. To Trent for three. No. Rebound Grady. No. Boucher tipping is good. And it's tied at 113. And I did not want to watch overtime. But it looks like we're going there. Boucher in the doghouse. For months it seemed. Gets himself back in rotation. Earns a spot, earns the play time, earns the closing minutes, and tips in what should be the bucket that sends this game to overtime. What a tip in there. Got to favor the Raps in it yet an overtime back to back night for the Portland Trailblazers. All of a sudden, guys. The minus three spread for the Raptors is alive. It's alive. Absolutely in the mix here. Could have been a foul on Boucher there too. Boucher though injured in the process. He's heading to the locker room here. True professional, Chris Boucher. Uh, a, a true, true professional. Um... Man, to just like that Pelicans game as bad as it got, he couldn't even get in that game. To having a key role in back-to-back -back game for the Raptors. And oh, he's not in the locker room. He's staying, he's staying out there. He's going to stay in the game as well. 0 0.7 seconds to go. Enough time for a catch and shoot for the Portland Trailblazers. If not, if it's not in, we're heading to overtime. Slim duck, baby. Looks like Chris Murray will inbound here for the Blazers. Raptors were down by 20 in this one. One effort to get back in the game. Murray lobs it to Aiden at the buzzer. Oh, and it rims out. Holy shit, dude. 
Oh my God, DeAndre Aiden, point blank, terrible defense. Rims out at the buzzer. Oh my Lord. You can tell both teams don't want to be here because Poland are laughing about that. They're laughing that he just missed that. They don't even give a shit about winning. Kelly Olenek, man, that's poor demons. How did that not go in, dude? That's a push off. Ball don't lie. You know why he missed? Because ball don't lie, baby. He pushed off like crazy. All right, guys. I'll be right back. We're doing overtime. I need another drink. I got to piss real quick. 196. Yeah, hit that like button while I'm gone. And let's, let's get going for overtime, baby. What's worse than a 10 p.m. start time game? A 10 p.m. start time game that goes to overtime. Here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The Raptors are down by 20. Down 38-18. Many people would have turned off the game at that point, including myself, but I didn't today. Because I stream. But good thing I do because we saw a terrific comeback here by the Raptors. They trailed by 21 in the second quarter tonight. So it was even worse than that 38-18 as I mentioned here. But can they come back here and get it done in overtime? Most importantly, can they cover the three-point spread that I bet before I knew R.J. Barrett was injured? We're about to find out. Overtime underway. Within five seconds, DeAndre Aiden scores because the Raptors uh, are still asleep. All right, 115, 113. Raptors going with quickly Olenek, Trent, McDaniels, and Boucher in overtime. Why McDaniels is getting important minutes is a mystery. It's a mystery to me. It's a mystery to you. Why the hell is Jim McDaniels playing basketball with the Raptors, period, let alone overtime in a game that they care about winning? I don't know. All right, how about this, guys? If Jalen McDoordash... Hits the game-winning shot. I'm McDoor-dashing McDonald's to celebrate. So open. Now I have to root for McDaniels because I really want McDonald's right now. Foul calling Kelly Olenek there. Yeah, the the yeah, I don't know why Grady Dick doesn't just get in the game here. I, I guess they're trying to save him. Abaji's been out, so you can't play Abaji.
Corner three for Kamara, no good. 115-113. Could you imagine a Delano game winner? Good God. McDaniels to Olinick. Corner three up fake. I believe Abaji got hurt. Olinick turns over. That's a bad pass. I mean, he knew that was a bad pass, and he still did it. I don't know why he did it. And the bucket there for the Blazers, it's a four-point game. And then I looked away for a second, and they have the ball back somehow. Four-point game. Aiden in the elbow. Misses. You don't want to give him that shot, but doesn't hit it. Quickly. McDaniels with two. Wide open. Like three-footer. Uh, of course not. Of course, couldn't hit it there. One seventeen, one thirteen. Grady Dick ready to come back into the game. Raptors have gone almost three minutes of overtime without a single point. Simons for three, three point game. Timeout. Well. Um, yeah, uh, two minutes and 50 seconds of overtime played. Zero Raptors points. I don't know, man. That's a uh, pretty poor play. All that hard work to get back in the game just to play like this in overtime, man. What the hell? Yeah, playing McDaniels in the clutch is a uh, weird call. We'll call it we'll call it weird. We'll call it dumb. <laughs> And it all started the first five seconds of OT where DeAndre got a wide open alley oop layup. Like, how did that even happen? I don't know what happened to Baji. He's only played 22 minutes. Granted, it's not like he's playing particularly. Great. So could just be a coach's decision here. But yeah, McDaniels calls a boneheaded move. Uh, they bring Grady Dick back in here. Quickly to the rim. Misses the layup, but is fouled. They'll head to the line. Did Free play well? Freeman Liberty? Freeman Liberty played okay. Quickly with another positive night overall by the Raptors. He was the topic of uh, yesterday's video on the channel. And uh, he's to great avail following it up. Yeah, I guess Abaji not playing well is probably still better than McDaniels. Not wrong there. Banton. Thigh ball. Back to Banton. Banton to the rim. And one. Eight-point game. 140 to go. Maybe they're trying to add some length to McDaniels. I mean, I know who adds length as well. It's Oche Abaji. Again, not saying he's playing well, but McDaniels doesn't do anything. Quite a game from Delano Banton. Um,.
not uh, not not a game that makes me regret the Raptors like letting go of him, but certainly an impressive performance. Nine point game. Raptors have one point in overtime. Quickly to the rim, misses the layup, and this game's done. Down nine, one overtime point. Yeah, you're going to lose uh, if that's the case. Overtimes typically have 16 points total. And uh, it might be the case, but Portland will only get 15 of them. Banton for three. And uh, that is a 13 to 1 overtime run for the Blazers as Trent misses a layup point blank. Yeah, this game's done. 126-114. Simons loses it. All right. Uh, quickly transition layup makes it uh, at least a little bit more respectable at 126-116. But uh, yeah, Raptors will still lose by double digits, even though as Aiden throws it down, Still going to be a double-digit loss, even though it did go to overtime. Were the Raptors still favored? Even without uh, RJ? You know, they they were only uh, two-and-a-half point... They only dropped half of they're they're still favored drafts by two and a half three points, even without RJ Barrett. So Yeah, this is uh this is still an ugly loss, guys. Uh as quickly misses the first free throw. Three overtime points so far. At most, it'll be four points in overtime for Toronto. We got fouled on a three, so at most it'll be five. As a reminder to members, typically we do have tomorrow's Sunday morning members exclusive live stream. Tomorrow morning, I'm going to be at brunch with my sister, so uh, can't make it, unfortunately. Uh, you sold your own bag. <laughs> it's all right. Um, losses happen. This quickly makes the free throw. And it is a 10-point game. Five overtime points for the Raptors. Banton gets over half court. And that'll do it. <sighs> yeah, you, you, you stayed up till... No dons. You stay up till till two thirty, sorry, twelve thirty in the morning, and the Raptors get beat by the Portland Trailblazers. All right, uh, I want to do a post game show and get the fudge out of here. Um, <laughs> listen, if you thought the Toronto Raptors were too good to catch the Memphis Grizzlies in the tank race. For a bottom six record, I got news for you. <laughs> Let's get into it in tonight's post-game show. All right, guys. 12.36 a.m. Eastern time at the time of recording here. The Raptors just lost in overtime to the Portland Trailblazers, 128-118. to How can that be? Overtime? They lost by 10 points. Well, the Raptors' valiant effort, I, I suppose. They were down by 21 points to the Portland Trailblazers tonight. Ended up coming back, forcing overtime with a Chris Boucher tip-in that goes in with 0.7 seconds remaining. And they get to overtime where the rewarded with, within five seconds, DeAndre Aiden scored an alley-oop layup and the Poland Trailblazers run away with it. The Raptors, in five minutes of overtime, score five points and lose again by double digits here to the Portland Trailblazers. So, you know, we'll call it what it is. It was overtime. Yeah, they got to overtime. They fought back from 21 points down. The Grand Inquisition will be, how the hell 
do you allow the Portland Trailblazers to take a 21-point lead against you? You know, props to you. You fought back. You didn't have Barnes today. You didn't have Pearl today. You didn't have Bruce Brown again today. You also didn't have R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett missed this game through illness. He was a late scratch. Not sure completely if that's a tank decision or an RJ's actually sick decision, but didn't look like he was on the bench, so I don't know what to make of that, but uh, the Portland Trailblazers here, they're on the second night of a back-to-back. They're missing Shaden Sharp. They're missing Jeremy Grant, among other players. DeAndre Aiden was not 100%. Simons was not 100%. Like... Even with all this shit, the Raps were still favored here. And they continue to just showcase that, man, like, they are really, really bad here. Uh, as bad as they are, though, there's just absolutely no way they should be this bad. You know, they, they were down. They, the Raptors led 2 nothing in this game out the gates. That's it. That's the only time they led. They led 2-0. Portland led 38-18 at one point. They led by 21 points in the second quarter as well. Like, how do you allow Anthony Simons, Chris Murray, Delano Banton, who the Raptors let walk in the summer, to Manny Kamara... And DeAndre Ayton, how do you let this team run wild against you? Like, everybody on Portland was dominating tonight. So many guys in Portland put up monster numbers. Like, sure, you can talk about the guys that are missing for the Raptors, but they still have Emmanuel Quickly. They still have Gary Trent. They still got solid pieces. Like, I get they're, they're undermanned, and this was a pretty ugly watch, but... Like, what's, like, your, any excuse the Raptors throw at it, the Por- Portland could have the same excuse. And the Raptors came out so, so flat and end up crumbling overall, losing 128 to 118. So, you know, I'm not asking for the world with this team. I'm not suggesting that, you know, they're they're a great team. I, I know they're a bad team. I know they're missing guys. But you know, you, you, those those only go so far. Those excuses only go so far. You know, props to the Raptors. They came back in the second half, made it a game, went to overtime. But... I mean, like, so much this season, they put themselves in a hole. They've game-planned poorly. They've come out flat, and it burns them. And this game is just another example as such. So it's becoming a theme. Somehow I made it through this one. I'm sure a lot of Raptors fans, maybe even you watching this right now, are thinking like, oh, I, wow, they actually made overtime. I turned the game off. Like, yeah, I don't blame you. It's an ugly game overall. I just watched Gary Trent Jr. shoot the fucking basketball 26 times. You, you have any idea what that's like? Gary Trent Jr. shot the basketball 26 times. You know how many points he had on 26? 26. Doesn't even feel like a real number. You know how many points Gary Trent Jr. had on 26 field goal attempts? 23. Yeah, if you shoot the ball 26 times, <laughs> you better have 23 points if you shoot the ball 26 fucking times. That's for damn sure. So, it's ugly. It's bad. But again, I mean, if you thought this team 
can't catch the Grizzlies in a tank race, you are mistaken. One game up on the Grizzlies. Three losses in a row for the Raptors. This provides them a 32% chance at a top four pick. Therefore, a 32% chance of keeping their pick because it's a seventh worst record. You cannot get the sixth or the fifth pick. But uh, yeah, they could still finish under the Grizzlies. You know, after all the things that went well in that Phoenix Suns game, it's disappointing that a lot of it kind of crumbles in this game here. So let's look at the individual numbers overall. You know, Kelly Olynyk had a much better game. He hasn't been shooting the ball well for the Raptors, but he did tonight. 3 of 4 from 3, 8 of 6, 6 rebounds, 2 steals, 2 blocks, 15 points. Gary Trent, this is how many times he shot the ball. This is how many points he had. That's it. Quickly, 10 of 21, 7 assists, 29 points. Again, quickly continues to thrive, even with the shit moat that surrounds him. Abaji struggled. Definitely didn't play well. 2 of 7 here. But is Oche Abaji worse than Jalen McDaniels? Probably not still. Grady Dick, not his best night. 8 points, 2 of 7 from 3. Chris Boucher, another good night. 16 points, 8 rebounds. Had the tip in at the buzzer. Pretty much to tie the game since OT. 3 blocks as well. In the doghouse, you got to wonder with all these players, people wondering, uh, Darko, what's he working with? Got all these bad players. What do you expect? Well, Boucher is clearly a capable, talented player who was in the doghouse for like two months. Three games in a row he's played. Three games in a row. I'm sorry. Um, two games in a row he's played. Two games in a row he's played pretty well. Uh, Jordan Nawara, decent, but for some reason didn't get a ton of minutes. Jerva, uh, sorry, uh, Freeman Liberty, decent again in his minutes. Jim McDaniels, 25 minutes. 10 rebounds, I get it. Two steals, I get it. I don't know. To me, Jalen McDaniels doesn't do much. I don't really see the need, even in this state, to even give him any minutes, especially over Oche Abaji. Uh, yeah, overall, Portland shot the ball well all game. They uh, they dominate the possession battle. They get 18 offensive rebounds to the Raptors' is nine. I guess that's bound to happen, but you know, the Raptors turned the ball over 20 times. That's crazy. Like, you just can't do that. Um, Delano Banton, 25 points in this game. <sighs> yeah, Raptors fans will be a little bit upset about that. Ultimately, the Delano Banton thing. You know, I could go, I don't want to go on a long wind and talk about Delano Banton here. But in short, he's a player that typically struggles to create advantages. Um, not a great initiator as a passer or a ball handler has been playing well with the Blazers. You know, don't know if that's something that's sustainable long-term, but I don't look back on that decision to let him walk and regrettably say like, you know, they let him walk. But the only thing I will say that in hindsight, looking back on the situation, probably should have traded him to the Spurs, the deadline in that hurdle trade, if they weren't going to use him. But yeah, on, on uh, has this Raptors game in general here. Um, it was a rough watch, even with them coming back. This was ugly. This is game, I think this is game 64 for the Raptors. It was ugly. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty tough watch overall. But I think we're going to get a lot of that for the rest of this season. It just kind of... Fighting through the rest of the season, getting over the finish line. <sighs> like people saying the Raptors should still be pushing for the playoffs. It's not the majority of Raptors fans anymore, but man, if you're a team that wants to make the playoffs and you can't even beat the Portland Trailblazers, you probably shouldn't be a team trying to make the playoffs. Six games back of the Atlanta Hawks now. 
yeah, it's uh, it's ugly, and it's going to be ugly to finish the season. Hopefully, at some point, they commit to a tank, but maybe even today they committed to a tank with R.J. Barrett being a late scratch. Who knows? Time will tell what the plan is for the team, but I stand on the same stance I was even before Barnes got injured. Yeah, tanking is probably the right move for this team. And again, as I started, I'll finish with what I started with. If you think this team can't catch the Grizzlies in the tank race, well, I think you're mistaken. That'll do it for this one, this post-game show. If you enjoyed, smash that like button. Subscribe to the channel for content like this for every Raptors game. And I'll see you again at the next one. We keep on doing this. We keep on battling through this. And the Raptors, well, the reward for uh, this loss against the Portland Trailblazers. Next up, they're in action on Monday. Or sorry, they're in action on Monday, yes, against... The Denver Nuggets in Denver. Double-digit loss to the Portland Trailblazers. 41-point loss at home to the New Orleans Pelicans. And the reward, you go away to the Denver Nuggets. That'll be ugly. All right, guys. Thanks so much for tuning in. Uh, this one lasted a bit longer than I would have liked. I want to go to bed. <laughs> uh, as a reminder to members, tomorrow I'm busy. Can't do the stream in the morning. I apologize. Two in a row, not going to be a regular occurrence. However, uh, unlucky for me, knee-wise, last week. I apologize again. Um, but I won't be able to do it tomorrow. I'm going to... Finish my drink. And I'm going to go to bed. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in here. And the clocks go forward, which means I get less sleep than I normally do today. You know, uh, back when I was a university athlete, student athlete, um, there was one magical day in, in first year. So for anybody who doesn't know, well, you don't know. Why, why would you know? Uh, my soccer team, when I played soccer in university, we practiced uh, every Sunday morning, 10 a.m. in the winter. We did indoor soccer session, 10 a.m. every Sunday morning. We're people in university. What do you think we're doing Saturday night? We're not getting early bed. So we're well refreshed for our soccer practice. It wasn't a serious soccer practice, but we had soccer. One magical year. Saturday was St. Paddy's Day. Popular day for partying and drinking. St. Paddy's Day also happens to be the birthday of one of my best friends. Your amateur reactions editor, your amateur sports moderator, Adam Scanlon. His birthday's on St. Paddy's Day. And it's St. Paddy's Day, which is on a Saturday, which is the night before soccer at 10 a.m. Now, the magical planet aligning moment was that this particular St. Patrick's Day, Adam's birthday, Saturday, was also the day the clocks went forward. So not only was it St. Paddy's Day, and I probably started drinking at 10 a.m., not only was it Adam's birthday, where I was pounding drinks with my buddy all day, and I, was, I, got, I drank way too much ahead of my soccer practice, I also lost an hour of sleep from the clocks moving forward. Needless to say, that 10 a.m. soccer practice wasn't, uh, wasn't Jacob at his best. But uh, what was great is that everybody was hungover. So it was even the, <laughs> even the playing field because everybody on the team was drinking St. Patrick's Day. 
and because it was Adam's birthday. All right, guys, that's it for me. Almost 1 a.m. I'm out of here. Thanks so much again. I had a look. The game was a rough watch, but I still had fun because I got to hang out with you guys as always. So uh, hope you all have a great rest of your weekend. Tomorrow, there's not going to be a video, <laughs> but I'm back here on Monday as the Raptors take on another late night showing. Not quite as late, but another Nate light showing. Nate, Nate light. <laughs> 